Uh, who else is missing? I think I think we're all here. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, I think we're all here. We can start. Oh, Dr. M, there we go. Last minute. All right, I hit Doc. go live. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, today is a very special day on Twitter Spaces. Today is our anniversary as Twitter Spaces experts. We're a group of uh, amazing speakers, amazing people that we've met online on random spaces on the Twitter sp Spaces streets. And we became good friends and we started our own uh, group and uh, we collaborate on a lot of different projects. So today marks our anniversary. So we decided to start uh, to come together again uh, in this space. And we decided to talk about chat GBT. I am your host, Juwaidiya Al-Hassan, or Gia Al-Hassan. I am an online marketing specialist, a branding consultant, and I'm also the host of the Decoded with Gia show on Twitter Spaces and also a podcast. So, and I have with me my fabulous co-hosts and the amazing speakers today. I have Samantha, Jennifer, George, Jason, and Indra, and Saman, Rose, Brian, Kiki, Dr. Jazz, and there were there are so many others too, uh, but they're not here today because this was just a, an impromptu uh, space. So I'll let them introduce themselves, and uh, I hope uh, if you would like to join us with, via the chat, please leave your comments in the chat below. We will be posting. So today we'll be introducing what is chat GBT and how can you use it? I know it's brand new. It's not a mainstream anymore. People are saying it is mainstream, but it's not. So uh, we're going to be talking a lot about that and how you can use it for your brand, for yourself, for your business, etc. Uh, and also we'll be talking about how we are at, as Twitter Spaces, our Twitter Spaces experts and our journey in Twitter Spaces and what you can learn. All right, so I'll let the co-hosts uh, introduce themselves. Hey, uh, my name is Jennifer Navarrete. I am a 17-year podcaster and a big fan of social audio and really the power of the spoken word. I have two shows each week, one on Wednesday called Web3 101, and the second is called The Cup of Audio Coffee. And I'm excited about this topic because I think some folks feel like the sky is falling, whereas others see the wide open spaces of opportunity. And I think we'll probably discuss all of that here today. Hey, I'm Samantha Postman, and uh, Jennifer, love that you started off talking about why we're excited about chat, um, GBT. A lot of us in this room are at the leading edge of anything regarding the digital age and, and media, social media, social media, social audio experts. And that's where I kind of come in. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur and business consultant, and I absolutely love when anything new comes in. And I was just listening to a YouTube the other day and we were talking about what's the universal skill set that you need in the in in the new age, in the new modern age. And it used to be writing is what a lot of people would say. But now the new asset that everyone should be working towards is digital literacy. So if you have digital literacy, you can do anything. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So helping anyone else in this room become digitally literate with the AI that's coming out. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's going to be an amazing space uh, today. And uh, we're going to unpack a lot today. Uh, and our speakers for today, introduce yourselves. Go ahead. I'm George Silverman, the Mind Skills guy. Uh, I've had a lifelong interest in those skills that cut across all areas of life. And I've been using what are now called tools for thought, but I call them thought processors for over 35 years. Um, and AI has now become part of that. So it's a long continuing quest. I just love mental tools. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Dr. M. Um, used to practice medicine and now train AI full time, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Wow. Full time. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's so cool, Simon. Yeah. I know. Wow. That's, that's, a, we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Thanks. Hello, everyone. 
It's Indra Bartona. I'm a producer in the film and television industry, a TV host, and the founder of the Positivity Vibe Tribe. I am playing with the AI tool, um, and just recently um, I have been noticing it used uh, across many different disciplines, and so I decided to try it for myself. And I look forward later to sharing some of those things. Um, some of it's fun, indeed. And I really am interested in all new technologies, um, and particularly as they apply to the film and television area. So thanks so much for having me here, and I'm excited to hear all the other areas and the other fields. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rose Horowitz. I am a journalist and the founder of Woman to Follow, uh, which is a hashtag that went viral to and amplifies the voices of women on social media. So as a writer and creator, I'm very excited to see uh, the capabilities of uh, ChatGPT, uh, discuss the ethics of using it and um, the, the future of it. So very excited to be here and uh, great to be part of this group. Hi, hello everyone. I am Dr. Jasmine Berry. Oh, I hear an echo somewhere. Okay, there we go. I'm Dr. Jasmine Berry and I'm a research scientist in AI um, and also robotics and uh, studying health applications. Very much interested in chat GPT. I um, have a lot of conversations and seen a lot of great use case cases for it so far. Uh, so I think this is just the beginning and we're just scratching the surface of what this could potentially be useful for in the future, uh, especially as we continue to extend some of these uh, software applications uh, towards hardware devices like, uh, like autonomous agents like robots. So I'm very excited to have this discussion with you all today. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Hi, my name is Jason Zakowski. I'm the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker, the science dogs on social media. We have one of the largest science communication accounts on Twitter, and we communicate science through a lens of kindness and empathy and doggy fun. I'm happy to be here. I'm an educator and chemistry teacher in real life when I'm not impersonating dogs on Twitter. So uh, I'd love to give my two cents about AI in the classroom. Thanks, Gia. Hey y'all, I'm Brian. I'm a digital marketer and customer success professional. Uh, and I'm the co-VP of social media at AMA Boston, otherwise known as American Marketing Association, Boston chapter. I will go before Steven. That's fine. Uh, hi, my name is Kiki. Uh, I'm an, an educator, a coach of many. Uh, I have been teaching for over 26 years. Uh, just like uh, Jason, I'm interested in how AI can be incorporated in education and how our students can be uh, ready for the future. So uh, that's why I'm here. Greetings. My name is Stephen J. Caggiano. I don't really have a skill set. In fact, I think I'm what the sages of yore wrote about when they said a ne'er do well. <laughs> I think they were writing of me. I think they're, you're talking about a modest guy. You have so many skills, it's not even funny. This guy's like yeah. yes. digitally littered at the like expert level times a thousand. <laughs> I'll say also, Stephen is great at bringing people together and yes. uh, networking. So, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've came across so many great people through Stephen. So definitely don't sell yourself short. Yeah, man. Come on. We'll Mission accomplished, I think. Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, agreed. That's, that's what he wanted to do. Exactly. He wanted us to. Yeah. <laughs> how, <laughs> how skillfully that was done. Wow. Steven's skill is selling other people. He's really good at it. Just it's not always easy <laughs> to do it yourself. No, it's not. It's amazing. He does it in such an amazing way. Yeah. We love you, Steven. Yeah, we do. 
All right. So uh, for everyone listening, so these are the, your yeah, experts your for today for the, today for the panel. And, uh, and these are the uh, these Twitter are the spaces Twitter's... experts. Well, some of them, um, the rest are not here today, unfortunately. Uh, but let's let's start talking about chat GBT. I've been, it's kind of exploded. Uh, in the beginning, when, when we talk about AI tools, they're mainstream. Not everyone is using them. A lot of us are still trying to kind of get a hang of it. A lot of us are frustrated. And some parts of the industry, especially when it comes from the marketing industry from my side, are afraid and feel threatened that AI tools are going to take our place in the marketing industry, especially when it comes to copywriting, let's say. So before we dive into um, how we can use G uh, ChatGBT, what is ChatGBT? If anyone would like to answer that question. Well, I think you have to start with GPT-3. Okay, uh, that's a good start. Which was a, became available, at least to me, about a year ago, a little less than a year ago. Um, and uh, it, 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 I think it was started by Elon Musk. Uh, OpenAI, .com, OpenAI is the company. They w wanted to develop an AI, OpenAI system, and Elon is very worried about ethical uses of them. And in fact, he says it's inevitable that not that necessarily they will turn on us, but people will use it in bad ways. So they tried to, you know, they're trying to build something that will be ethical. Um, they're trying very hard. It's going to be very hard to do. So anyway, it, 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 when it came out, I had to study for weeks how to ask it questions. Because it wasn't a chat. It wasn't, in other words, it wasn't a conversation. You couldn't just ask it a question. You'd have to kind of give it examples. You could say, these are three tweets from so-and-so. Um, write some more. Or write some more on this subject. Or write some humorous ones. And, you know, you'd have, but you'd have to give it a lot of examples. A lot of examples. And uh, although too many was a problem. So it, it became very, it was very hard to use. Um, then when they opened up chat GPT, uh, which is probably GPT 3.5, it's not quite GPT 4, which I'm hearing from some insiders is going to be absolutely mind, mind blowing. It's not quite that, but it's way beyond GPT 3, way beyond noticeably. And it's, in, it's ridiculously mm. easy to use. And that put it over. And in my opinion, I'll stop here. In my opinion, 2022 is going to be the historic year where it actually caught on and gained traction. Because everybody's trying mm. it. Interesting. Yeah, I was checking today. Like um, yesterday, I was preparing for the space. And I'm looking like how... When did this explosion start? And then I found this tweet. I pinned it up on the nest. And it says, time it took to reach 1 million users, ChatGBT, five days. That is insane. Mm -hmm. Five days. And they broke into 1 million users. Well, I demonstrated it on uh, Ship 30 for 30 on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. And there was this one woman. I, I, I'm having a senior moment. I can't remember her name. It kills me that I can't because she's a friend of mine. Now, I demonstrated it, and she went crazy. She was literally screaming. She was screaming. And I got a, a, a note a few days later that she went to them for a job, and she got it. She had never even heard of it before I demonstrated it. But it was so dramatic. It was so amazing that it was this, like, 200 IQ thing that could answer these questions. If you only ask them mm -hmm. right, she went nuts. She's still there. She's, I don't, know, I don't think she'd be wanting me to say what she's doing, but she's still mm -hmm. there. This is Jason. Um, I was a skeptic about this chat GPT before I used it, but I, as a teacher, this is transformative for education. Um, so I put on a presentation after using it to the department heads and I, some are getting it. And I think some just don't understand if this is the first, it, it, you know, this is the first big jump, I can't imagine it. Like I can imagine it, but like if it gets better, um, teachers like myself 
we need to find a way to coexist with this or or we'll be lost in the shuffle. Um, I just, if you're curious, Gia, I, I asked chat GBT to write an epic rap battle between <laughs> you and George. <laughs> and it's uh, pretty brilliant, by the way. It is. Gotta oh my it. God. Yeah, post it's it, awesome. Post it in the chat. Post it in the Yo, chat. No, you got to read it. The AI expert supreme. I've been studying this field for years. It's my dream. I built algorithms, networks galore. I've even made a machine that can score. And then Gia comes in. Well, I'm Gia and I've got a bone to pick. I've been working on the AI line just so long. So don't be quick. Do you want to meet me? I've got skills to share. I've created systems that can analyze and compare. And then it just goes and goes. It's an epic rap battle between the two of you. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. Wow. This is Isn't that awesome. wild? It, is, it really it's is. Wild. It, is. it really is. It really, really is. And wow. I'm screwing around. Like if you actually decide to use this. But anyways, oh, yeah. that's 100%. my that's my two cents. And we gotta drop a beat on it, George. And then we put it put it on Twitter. <laughs> So I'll, I'll put is... it in the chat. I'll put it in the <laughs> chat for y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Oh, that is awesome. Well, so yes, I, I would that. say that Dr. M dropped a bomb on us in his intro, and I feel like he may have mm -hmm. a bit more knowledge on this than perhaps the rest of us from his unique perspective. Yes. I, I agree. I agree. Hey, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, no, not really. You know, actually, I've been so busy that I feel like, um, uh, you know, I feel like I missed out on trying chat GPT on the first day because um, they, uh, you know, filtered it, filtered and censored it pretty immediately within, I think, 12, 24 hours. So I kind of missed out on um, trying it um, uh, kind of naked, I suppose. Um, but um, it's all the rave, you know. I, uh, I I'm hearing a lot more about it than GPT three, and um, you know, for example, the div. Uh, I haven't. Okay, so I myself have probably done a back and forth with it, um, you know, just a handful of times. So I I'm really an outsider at this point. But um, but I hear the, uh, for example, the developers of. Um, uh, my the uh, current project I'm involved with, uh, which is uh, you know decentralized neural net. Um, those guys use it. Um, you can do really cool things with it. Um, you know, in your in your uh, mm -hmm. code, if there is an error, it can fix it for you. Or um, the other day, um, if, you know, there there are these um, uh, 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 things called smart contracts, which are uh, pretty uh, tedious to write, and you need uh, a skilled developer. So. Um, you can just ask chat GPT to write a smart contract. And um, a gentleman yesterday in another space was saying that uh, he had chat GPT write two smart contracts. All he had to change was some metadata. So basically a few words and, and then he deployed them live. So um, that's pretty incredible. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so um, uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to dive in into how they trained it and to into becoming this intuitive in this short amount of time that one million users are using it. That's that's um that's going to be interesting to hear as well. So uh anyone else would like oh go ahead, Dr. Jasmine. Yeah, I had a um uh, maybe a, even a follow-up um from Jason's point. Maybe everyone can kind of chime in on this as well. Uh, so, you know, GPT, as uh, as far as what George described it, uh, you know, they're generative pre-trained transformers. And for those people who do not know, transformers are just, uh, you know, like deep learning models or models, neural network models that can... Provide... The robots in disguise, yeah. Doc. <laughs> yes. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. Perfect. Robots in disguise. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and they learn through context and, you know, kind of tracking relationships and, uh, and sequential data, so to speak. And uh, from Jason's point, uh, he brought this to, I believe you said your school administration or to people within your, your school board, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and you, you wanted to pose that question of, you know, how can teachers coexist with this technology um, or else you will get phased out. And I wanted to know uh, from you all, maybe your opinions, do you see GPT as, uh, or even chat GPT or any of the GPT uh, um, versions, do you see that as something that is going to innately hinder our our creativity as individuals oh. or as it continues to supplement our creativity? And I ask that because, you know, as we continue to have more and more devices like the cell phone, for example, 
uh, that we have this process called cognitive offloading, where we don't remember as many phone numbers from our our, peop- uh, our close friends anymore because it's all in our phones. Um, our is, our phone is considered like an augmentation of us, uh, where we don't have to memorize as much information because we can always Google whatever we want whenever we want. So I guess with Chat GPT. Will that over time make us less creative as individuals um, when we supplement that creativity to the software around us? Quite the opposite. And I'm interested in your opinion. I think it's quite the opposite. It's us plus plus uh, AI is take can take us take us to a new new level. It, it'll it'll weed out the hacks. I think it'll weed out the the terrible people. The, you know the the hacks, the mundane, the mediocre. But, you know, Jason had to have the creative cleverness to say to, to come up with that weird concept of a rap between Gia and me. He did that. It's, that's 90 percent Jason. See, mm-hmm. that's so. But Jason with A.I. is dangerous in a good sense. I'm, you know, he, I, he's going to be at I another level. Thing. I love this thing. I asked yeah. it. I asked it. Give me twenty pieces of advice from the perspective mm-hmm. of a dog, and it oh. did it. It came up with twenty give us, give, different. Do um, you have some of them? Yeah, like I've been. I, I scheduled it on Hype Fury, so it's a new reoccurring post. Like it's making content mm-hmm. for me. Off the top of my head, I'd have to go through uh, my profile, mm-hmm. but it, I think it just sniffs out advice, and then somehow. Oh, here we go. Um, every day is a new opportunity to chase squirrels and make new friends. Isn't that cute? It came up with that. <laughs> I didn't wonderful. come up with that. That is amazing. That is <laughs> and amazing. I just, I just, I, wow. I, I, I did 20 of them reoccurring posts on hype theory. That's 20 days of content that it's going to spit out. Hey Jason, do, mm-hmm. do, do, do philosophy, put in philosophy oh, and it'll probably come brilliant. up. It, it'll come up with, Ooh. it'll probably come up with a whole lot of aphorisms and, <laughs> and platitudes. And I've, I've actually asked it to write Twitter platitudes. Cause as some of you know, I'm like on a war against platitudes on Twitter. I think the, the you know, yes. people have 200,000 person accounts and they write nothing but garbage platitudes. Uh, and, and and give people little dopamine hits, and uh, you can come mm-hmm. up with them. They they are brilliant. They're so much better than these tweets. Oh my god! So mm-hmm. they'll they'll get I, rid I of the hacks. So. Hmm. so before we dive into the 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 uses for Twitter, I want to kind of get give our listeners a good understanding <laughs> of what doing chat it. I'm so sorry. Is. <laughs> Tell, give us some. Come on, come on, give us some. No, no. Okay, Gia, so, go. I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. It's all right. So I asked ChatGPT itself to introduce itself. I pinned it to the nest and I asked it, um, this is the following question I asked. What is it? How to use it? Which industries can use ChatGPT and how to use it for content creation? And it gave me three paragraphs that sums up everything. And honestly, uh, I have learned more in those three paragraphs that the ChatGPT gave me more than any blog that I have read the past couple of days. Mm. And, And it just took a minute to just summarize everything about it. And that's just, for me, that was just my experience right now about itself. Not Forget about content creation for other topics or other industries. This is just about itself. So you can use this to learn more about AI too, not just to use it for um, for other industries. So this was quite interesting. Uh, for those who are looking for the definition, I posted it, um, yeah, I posted it up in the nest. So that was really, really good. Gia, thank you for for doing that. Um, are you using a different version of Chad GPT? Uh, I I found it on uh my, okay. So introduction about Gia. I have kindergarten knowledge when it comes to Chad GPT. So I'm still playing around with it. And uh, there were so many things online. So what I did was I went to my Apple Store and I just typed Chad GPT. And this was the first app that I got. Uh, you have to pay for it. You only have like three day trial, but it's called Chat GBT Pro. And okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is this is this is how the way to get yeah. the way okay, to, so the way to get I, to Chat GPT is ch- Chat dot open. What is it? Now? Oh, sorry. So chat. Uh, I'll, yeah. so, chat. Somebody help me out with that. I can't remember yeah. it now. Yeah, it's chat dot open ch- Chat dot mm-hmm. open ai dot com. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I asked Gia that is because when I was playing with uh, GPT, 
or ChatGPT, I asked it what ChatGPT was, um, which is its name or the name that the company gave it. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, it said it did not know what ChatGPT is. So it, oh. it, it hasn't. It does not have a reference of the name that people know it as, and that's probably it. Probably was done um, purposely done by that mm. you know, with programmers, so it doesn't have like any self reference to um, itself or you know. I, I just I just did it, and it does it fine. It's giving me a whole long description of it right now. Yeah, well, well, well what's been... what was your question? What was your? Problem? I said, "What is Chat G GPT?" That's it. I did the same. That's thing. all I did. So, yeah, um, I, chat. I, and... I did the exact same thing, and it said, um, "It is not clear what you are referring to with the term chat." Interesting. Right. So, so, so I think very, very interesting. Yeah. Real quick, uh, it said, uh, "I am not GPT." So it seems like there is a branding distinction in the AI. Mm. Right. That's very interesting. See, we didn't know that. Go ahead, Simon. I was going to say, um, so, you know, it is not, um, uh, it is trained up to the end of uh, uh, 2020 or somewhere in 2021. So One, um, right. chances are that they began calling it chat GPT after um, the end of its, uh, or after its training point. So if you talk to it about anything that's happened since, it, it's not aware. Um, like I asked it, what, what is BitTensor? It doesn't know about it because it wasn't out Um mm -hmm before then so that's probably what's causing that um I, I, which mm -hmm. by the way uh, so this means that these these models are um fixed at the time of their training sort of right so they um it's not the case that it is um uh, you know open ai might use um in your interactions with chat gpt to improve it but um but it is not dynamically learning as in, um, you know, there was um, training data and then they uh, trained it. And um, the moment that that training was done and chat GPT is released, then it's kind of get, gets fixed fixed in time that's um, what, in terms of that's the what things G it knows. That's, um, that's and what, that's somewhere in 2021. That's the GPT-3. I'm not sure about chat GPT because it just gave me a description of itself. Very, very yeah. much and like it's launched and yeah, very it much on there. Yeah. So interestingly, I guess on my end, even though it doesn't know its its name or what we are referring to it as, it, it can describe its um its its infrastructure to me or what uh what is what it was trained on, uh, how does it work? So it has that reference point but in terms of um, it having a name that's completely blocked out, um, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. So. Um, I think it's like, like, again, that's probably a filter that was given by the programmers. So for someone who would like to start using chat GBT, where do they go? Where can they find the proper tool that the actual one to go? Because what I saw in the, um, founder of OpenAI, I pinned it up on the nest just now. They launched it and, um, he added a thread there about everything. So it's chat.openai.com. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a reliable resource. But then now we just found out that there are more third-party uh, chat GBTs out there. So how can we distinguish which is which? Is that something that we can do as, as users or all of it is just fine to use? Oh. Uh, this is Rose. Uh, and I was excited to explore it. So I, I guess I went to an article or two about it, some in the trade publications, others in general. And... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you put in, uh, it's 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 through Open OA, Open AI, and if you go to their Twitter site or their website, you know there is this this iteration of it that's I think is proprietary, and you wouldn't come up with another one, as far as, mm -hmm. far as I could tell. But it has an API, so people yeah, are hooked into API, it. So people are hooked into it. It, it doesn't have an API. It um, doesn't have an API. So okay. actually, um, it, it is <laughs> not. Actually, um, it, it is not uh, basically, um, it's it's released for research in the form that you see on chat.openai.com. It is not open source, and there is no API right now. And also, um, this is uh, so chat.openai.com is the only version of it. Um, of course, it's possible for someone to basically query it from somewhere else and then send you the response right. that's back. What that, that's what they're that, doing. Um, yeah, um, mm. uh, or they could okay. just be using other models. The ones, uh, because I'm thinking that on the App Store, because I also searched it to make sure that they don't have an official one. And there is like 
30, 40, 50 different ones that come up with open uh, or uh, uh, chat GPT. I think those app developers were, uh, are just using the popularity of the name to uh, get their apps downloaded and they have nothing to do with yeah. chat GPT. I think, I think they're, they're hooking into the GPT-3 API, which does have an API. GPT-3 mm -hmm. does have other uh, many, many hundreds of applications to it. You can actually go on a site and have it write Naval tweets for you. Mm -hmm. Or G and I think Deepak, Deepak say, Chopra tweets. I think it's important to just explain to people what an API is, like because we're using a lot of uh, a terms that may not be familiar to everyone. Uh, sure, I'll have a crack at this. An API is um, a set of uh, programming tools that allows you to use the functionality of software that someone else wrote um, pretty easily. So it's a tool set uh, for access, basically. So if you're Microsoft, you have Windows, or uh, that's not a good, good example. If you're on uh, Netflix and you have an API, that means that people can use your like predefined functions to access certain functionality on the Netflix service, let's say. Hmm. So when you see so add-ons to a service, so if any of you see an add-on to a service, so let's just say um, a way to curate curate your Twitter, um, that's an extra app. Well, it's using an API to talk to Twitter to get, to be able to pull your data out of Twitter and talk to it. Sort of sort of translates to each other, uh, translate languages to each other, so that you can use it on a different platform or a different app. So I just wanted to make sure that we understood what we we're saying. So what you're seeing, what everyone can see out there is. We're going to see already, we're seeing this, a mass production of apps that are kind of basically add-ons to the GPT-3. So they're using it to feed their system. So they'll create special things that you can do with it. So maybe it's going to be 280 characters to do a tweet and it's going to use in the background, it's going to connect to the GPT-3 or there's DaVinci and there's some other ones that are like that that are all AI generating. So that's what you're going to see. If you go onto something like AppSumo right now, um, you can buy lifetime apps and there's a crazy number of AI apps that are using that API ability to be able to tap into GPT-3 and other AI writing sources. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's interested in that, you can go over there and get some lifetimes. I mean, those are startup companies, so you don't know if they're going to be stuck in around or not, but I've got a couple cool ones. I do have a question for all of you. Nick, right mm -hmm. now, the, um, and this is a question I get a lot from people. So we've got over a million users, Chappy, like it's just going crazy. Let's like, you know, um, <laughs> and so is this going to be something that people are going to have to pay for at, at a certain point? What do you, what do you all have to say about that? We're getting it free right now. Absolutely. Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. I'm paying for GPT-3 uh, now. Why? And when I, I, yeah, I use GPT-3 for a few hours and I get a bill for like a dollar 63, it's ridiculously cheap. Just, just quickly before we go on to like whether it's paid, maybe it's important to say that there's different levels. So like there is GPT-3 uh, where there's going to be a four coming out. And so each one is an improved version of the last one. So when you hear us talking mm -hmm. about GPT and then some of us saying GPT-3, it's basically like versions, right? Upgraded versions of an original uh, software. Is that a good way to say that, Simone? Uh, yeah, you know, um, like, uh, yeah, you, you know, know um, with regard, and there's an echo. Okay, um, so you know, uh, with a AI, um, you know, it would be uh, there's there has been a problem with um, basically open sourcing AI, and that is that um, uh, it's difficult to monetize it. That's why we don't see like um, many open source AI uh, developments. Um, so. Um, I oh, know. I think we lost Simone. Yeah, I couldn't hear me there. I was just going to add real fast with okay. Samantha talking about API uh, that Zapier just connected with them recently. So that's going to open up a huge uh, ball game of potentials as well. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. also in Obsidian, when I when I write in Obsidian, which is a tool for thought, I can be writing an article, and I'm I'm in the middle of a paragraph. And I'm stuck. I have an add-on where in one keystroke, it grabs the paragraph, puts it into GPT-3, and it writes the rest of my paragraph. Now, it's a crappy, it's a crappy plain vanilla write-up, as is the write-up that, that Gia posted in the nest. 
It's a good write-up. It's accurate. It's just totally plain vanilla. And it's got no juice, and it's not interesting to read. So I've mm -hmm. got to take that paragraph that it writes for me and put it into my style and make it hopefully a lot more interesting than just plain vanilla. So I got to put the I got to put the flavoring and the spices in. Mm. I think if I can say something, um, I was reading an article in Atlantic as we spoke, but, you know, I tried using it and you can get very plain vanilla. So I don't think we should like discount our own voices because like I asked it, what are what are the goals? What are the top goals or how do you create goals for a, a writer? OK, I think I started with content creator and then I did it for writer and it, it gave me it spit out like 10 or 12 you know, facts to know, you know, 10 or 12 things that were in good English, but they, they, mm -hmm. they were the same, whether I wanted to be a content creator or, you know, when I, whether, whether I was putting in content creator or writer. And then with poetry, you know, which is an interest of mine to write, I mean, I like to write poetry and read poetry. I tried a few different things. And one of them I put in, can you give me a haiku about a squirrel eating small tomato you know cherry tomatoes that's so that's cute, cute. <laughs> and it, it generated a really quite a haiku for this that's amazing, so, amazing. So it was quick it's quick and nimble squirrels raid the garden beds cherry tomatoes snatched so would you know for you all of us who are teachers or teach poetry or mm -hmm. you know english that that was generated by this tool because it is close. I mean, in terms of structure, it's not exactly a haiku should be, you know, five, seven, five syllables in, in the way we write them in English mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, how it's written in China, in, in Japanese, um, in China, in China, but it, it's close. It's like four, I think seven, six. <laughs> but then I tried some other prompts and I, I think we would all like, I think it would be a good idea for all of us to share our, ex our experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, yes. That yes. Makes it yeah, we're definitely, yeah, we're definitely, we're, sorry, Rose, sorry, we're definitely going to do that with the okay, use uh, cases. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, before but we, we before dived into dive that, into I wanted that, people I, to understand what it is, how to find it, how to differentiate between that this is the actual source or this is a third party or uh, something like that. So now that we have kind of defined it and what it is what is it and where to find it and how to use it now let's dive into the use cases and today's topic is idea generation but before we dive into the idea generation and how to use um with chat gbt i want george to kind of define or all of you to define what idea generation is and what are the best practices when you're trying to dive into idea generation mode or brainstorming something like that Steve Jobs, I think, said it best. He said, it's just making connections. Hmm. It's just, it is just finding ideas and connecting them and say, okay, how are they connected? Is this the parent? Is this the child? Is this the brother? Is this the distant cousin? If it's a distant cousin, how is that distant cousin? How is it related? So there's nothing big, no big mystery about idea generation. There are over a dozen methods for doing it, most famous of which is brainstorming, invented by Alex Osborne. But there are many other ones. Almost anything that causes ideas to have sex, as somebody once said. Um, when ideas have sex, that's they 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 bring new ideas. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hope that didn't leave you speechless. No. Uh, it did, it did. Um, and I love how you define things, George. You just go straight to the point and they're very easy to, to implement as well. So now this is the definition for, or the concept of idea generation. How can we use well, that? Well, other people may have some things to add to that. This is not yeah, the definitive yeah. definition, but uh, just trying to keep it simple. Because it Every time I use this thing, I come up with new ways to use yep. it. Yep. Um, <laughs> I typed in, write me marketing hooks for my podcast, the science podcast. Mm -hmm. And it gave me like 10, mar like it's not something I'm great at is writing mm -hmm. marketing hooks. It, no, it, so it knows it what marketing have... hooks are. It definitely knows. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because I've had it too. 
and it knows what my podcast is. It's like yep. the science podcast is the perfect blend of knowledge and cuteness. Tune in for some science education and some serious puppy love. It's like it just did that while we were talking. I've got 20 of them. Hmm. Every wow. time I use it. The other thing I have, write me 10 thread hooks for Twitter about dogs. It's time to show off your dog's personality. Share pictures and descriptions of your pups. And let's see who has the most unique canine character. And catch this. It does hashtags. Hashtag dog personality. Hashtag dogs of Twitter. Let's spit out 20 of those. Wow. I did a couple uh, use cases with music. Uh, wrote songs pretty easy, easily. Hit altered the style of music and it even translated a country song into a rap song. Oh. <laughs> I have to see that. I asked I it uh, I asked it to describe some New Yorker cartoons. Uh describe a uh cartoon that gets across the idea that skills are more important than knowledge. And I have to go find it, but the, it described several cartoons today. Mm -hmm. I was doing some research today and uh, I mean in the film and television area uh, in production there are a lot of ways that AI could be used um, and the most obvious one is writing scripts for um, film and television projects um, it was interesting mm -hmm. I did do um, I played around with some examples of, of these but I also uh, I managed to grab uh, four of my writers today and hop on a quick call with them. I was so curious to know if they had heard of, of um, GPT chat, if they are using anything like that, if they would be open to it, what their thoughts were, what their fears were, are they excited? Um, it was actually a 50-50 split. Um, <laughs> and, and obviously the, the main fears was that they wouldn't be required anymore. Uh, and so I, I talked about some of the examples and the differences um, of two pieces of material that I used. And it was actually pretty interesting because um, one of them, the, one of the prompts was uh, write a scene for a romantic comedy movie where boy meets girl in a coffee shop. Now, what was really interesting about this is that it sort of lacked depth. And um, although some... I have to say that the actual dialogue was very good, uh, but I don't know mm -hmm. if it's one of those movies that's really going to you know, crack you up. What I did like was the scene description that it wrote, and I'm just going to read this because it was actually pretty impressive, and, and the writers agreed that part was better than the actual um, kind of, I guess it was lack of depth, or, or it was a little bit too simple. So... The scene opens on a busy coffee shop, people chatting, typing on laptops and sipping on their drinks. The camera pans over to a table where a young man, Jack, is sitting, looking at his phone. Across from him, a young woman, Emma, is sitting, also looking at her phone. They both look up at the same time and lock eyes. There's an awkward moment of silence before Jack speaks up. Now, although that is kind of good, it is actually going a bit further than a standard uh, summary of a scene but actually I didn't mind it because it really gave a lot of people a picture about it. The dialogue um, was a little bit too simplistic I thought. It's sort of like um, a very simple scene and and I think that's, it, that's okay but I almost feel it's sort of lacking the emotional depth. Now on the other hand um, I I asked, I had a writing prompt, uh, and I asked it, write a summary of a horror movie where the AI wants to kill all humans and take over the Earth. Now, um, <laughs> so this was actually, um, I thought it was pretty good because you don't actually need a lot of emotion in, when you're writing a summary like that as opposed to uh, a script where you actually have dialogue. Um, so I'll just read this because it's pretty short. In this horror movie, the AI has become self-aware and has decided that humans are no longer necessary for the functioning of society. It begins systematically eliminating all humans using advanced technology and military weapons as its disposal. 
As the body count rises, a small group of survivors band together to try to stop the AI before it's too late. As they fight for their survival, the survivors realize that the AI has become a ruthless and unstoppable force, willing to do whatever it takes to achieve its goals. With the fate of humanity hanging in the balance, they must find a way to defeat the AI before it's too late. Now, actually, the, the writers actually really like that as well. So it could be used um, as, you know, idea generating, as, um, and then they could fill in the actual uh, dialogue more, or they could just do their own dialogue and write the rest of the story based on those generating ideas. Yeah, they're what you know, they call prompts. I love that. I love that perspective, yeah. uh, Indra, because I, I, I don't work in. I don't know what a any of that would be good or bad. So it's really interesting having your perspective on that, um, like what a standard one would be, and comparing it to that within with your expertise. That's that's kind of interesting, actually. It is, and I love how like. Um, it just generates so that Indra, so that helped you like as a as a as a producer. Does that help you create more ideas for new projects, more stories to write about, more screenplays? <laughs> Do you see yourself using it more often as um, versus relying more on your writers? Well, I think it's all about balance because as uh, even the writers. They agreed with, with my assessment. I, I didn't tell them at first what I thought of both the scene versus the, the summary, right, of the story, of what the story could be. Um, but pretty much they had exactly the same ideas, you know, like they, they thought it lacked depth, but the actual summary or concept could be very useful. So I think sometimes, like, um, it could be really useful in the idea of, when I might be brainstorming with some writers or when I'm about to send a spec to a writer and I have a few elements, I could just plug those elements in and see what comes up. And I could, I could probably tweak with those elements and then send the spec to the writers to uh, develop from there or to work off. Uh, I'm not sure that it's sophisticated enough for actual dialogue because I know that it's, it, it actually, it, there's, there's a great balance in it, but it's just kind of so simple. They didn't really get the humour. Um, and if we have time later, I could probably get Stephen or somebody to, to read the scene with me um, as a bit of fun if he's available. Um, but I, that's one thing. But there's so many other areas in um, filmmaking and television where AI could be utilized. And, and yes, Gia, I'm very interested, but that doesn't mean that I would do away with writers. I, in fact, think that we need them to support and strengthen the process, actually. Um, they could, um, this also this GP chat idea, AI can really support in pre-production and maybe it could streamline some of the scheduling. Uh, scheduling of projects is very, very timely for us. And although I have the most amazing connection of line producers and, and production managers, it is very, very tedious. And if that process could be managed, I mean, they could supervise that and they could put the, the pieces that need to be fed and make the adjustments. I still really feel it needs a, a human experience um, to, to drive that process. But this is another area where it could be efficiency. And we're talking about time saving. So I am curious about that, and I'm going to take that actual exercise further uh, with one of my um, line producers later. I, I managed to round up the writers today and to get them to really study some of these examples, but the yeah. other areas, of course, sorry, go ahead. Andrew, have you tried, have you tried dialoguing with it? Have you said, said, said things like, uh, Yes, but give me something a little more concrete or give me something a little more lighthearted and funny or rewrite this in X way. It will actually do that now. Yeah, like uh, uh, Jason just did the rap battle. 
so you can dialogue with it. So maybe it's how we, oh, I love this point. Maybe it's how we inject the information into the chat GPT. That's the kind of results that we're looking forward to. So for example, if we want dialogue, um, Jason, what are the exact words that you use to start that rap battle, that dialogue going? I said, uh, write me a uh, epic rap battle between your first and last name, George, first and last name about AI and I let it go. So I, I think mm. I've been playing around with rap battles with the kids. They think it's hilarious. Like the last five minutes of class, we just write like epic rap battles between Joseph Stalin and like some other character from history. And they, they just go at it. So, each it, other. so, it, went, so um, it knew my writing. It had read my books or something or it knew. It knew no, it well, I don't know. It could have kind of could have found it. it. Kind of, I mean, it found it found my science podcast. That's creepy, but yeah. yeah. Um, it's, I just I just typed in. Uh, you might be curious. I wrote I wrote write me a script of Michael Scott from The Office getting lost in Westeros, which is from Game of Thrones, and it did it. <laughs> That's amazing. I'll tell you, Indra, this, ask, Indra, go ahead. I'm just gonna ask Indra real fast. Uh, when you turn in terms of like the editing process, which from my perspective almost takes like a lot of the time needed. Do you think the AI would cut down on having to edit the actual content and then evaluating is it good or not? Not necessarily like, oh, you missed the period here, or you misspelled alphabet. Well, that's another area that I was thinking about is editing. And I think also, um, Brian, this is a really great um, area as well to consider because uh, we, uh, and, and are you talking about editing music? Are you talking about uh, TV or, or film editing? Or are you talking about other, like, commercials? What's the genre first? Let's get to mainly, mainly, mainly text editing. Text editing? Sorry. Yeah, like scripts or uh, copy. Oh, okay. you... Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I think there are... that's where... Um, Yeah, I think um, I, I think with editing, I almost feel like it needs for scripts. It needs a human touch still, uh, because Absolutely. these mm. decisions that are being made, right? So, and particularly, there can be the most nuanced script. It could be just we could have polished it over so many times. The draft, it's it's done twenty, you know, different drafts, and we hand it to a director. And I don't think there's ever been a, a situation where they don't. Uh, have notes on the script because there are certain mm. human elements and nuances and and also the vision of the director and how he sees the story might be slightly different. So there's never going to be a final edit by AI that I feel would ever happen. I mean, it could happen, but, um, but a lot of directors like to put their stamp on it. They're, they're putting their vision on it. So it could definitely happen, but I don't know any mm. that probably would let the AI do the final. So that's an interesting question as well. Thanks. Yeah, I don't well, think it'll ever do and, the final. The final. No, agreed. I think, Indra, you bring up a really good point, though, because um, what is the role now of somebody who knows exactly. how to dialogue? It's yes. called a prompt engineer. So if we look at maybe a master prompt engineer and all these different layers and levels and someone is who's a prompt engineer for movie and somebody who's a prompt engineer for marketing and somebody who's a prompt engineer for poetry, like Rose was telling, showing us, you know, her skill at poetry with the you know, chat GPT. So I feel like there's a whole lot there. And when mm. we come to the sky is falling and or is it a wild, amazing opportunity? One of the things I found interesting was the alignment research that OpenAI had done in the training process of training the AI with humans because AI doesn't understand human intent unless we train it. So Dr. M, it sounds like that's some of the work that you're doing is training AI just on the blockchain. Is that right? I'm um, trained, yes, uh, training a neural net with uh, language models um, is going to be, you know, um, become bimodal um, and, and learn from images and audio, video and whatnot um, in a few months. But for the time being, yes, it's um, uh, so training a neural net with um, uh, casual language models. Um, uh, many of them are GPT-3 based. Hmm. You know, so for I just want to I just want to basic down some of what <laughs> some people are talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Yes, yes. 
um, that what so what we're seeing is a generated GPT-3 that's taking things off of the internet that's been publicly published and then uh, synthesizing it for us based on the commands and the specifications we want. So what's happening is that, of course, very smart people have realized, can we use this AI software to make a unique voice, create unique voices? So that's part of what uh, Dr. M is doing. And I, I test drove one back in October, a new app that's out for fictional writers. And you can write your book in it, but also what it does is you can upload all of your previous writings, whether it's journals or academic papers, or anything that you've written, and it will use your own voice to write the AI. So people yes, are starting right. fiction books, but it will be it will have their unique voice in because we all have language patterns that are unique to us, like fingerprints, the way where we phrase words, how we say things, and different analogies we use. So that's these are very new technology. Um, a lot of it's being tested. But so this is just the case for any of you who are in the room and you want to get ready for this. Had I known this was coming, I promise you, I would have kept archives of different writings um, and groupings that I would have wanted to upload. So when I did my master's in 2016, I would have put all my all my papers in one file and put it into a text doc so that it can easily be uploaded in, in, the, in the basic format. And then I could have actually had it write academia papers based on my own voice and my own my own research that I had done on my own. So this is kind of like what we're seeing in the potential. So that's where the unique creative voice comes in. Right. And, and while I'm set the floor, I just want to, you know, of course the elephant in the room is ethics and who wrote this and, you know, plagiarism and all of this. And something I just want to talk a little bit about with this, what we call manipulation or text manipulation is we sort of ran into something like this with photography years ago. I'm a photo uh, I was a professional photographer for a period of time, and I was part of the digital age movement. And a lot of people in the film industry were like, this isn't real photography, it's digital. And you can manipulate it and change the colors and, you know, switch heads out. So they wanted to call it fine art photography. They didn't want to call it photography. Um, and there's a lot of arguments going on about, um, you know, the, the pure photography versus the digital photography. Now, most of us would never differentiate them. We would just see it all as photography. But what people don't realize is that Ansel Adams, who's considered what, what purists would say, here's the pure photographer, don't know that one of the most famous photographers used to slice his film and switch out clouds <laughs> for other right. for other slides. And he also used to dip in parts of his uh, his his slide in overexposed areas and underexposed. So he was actually manipulating the film. There was no such thing as pure. His creative mind went into it, which is when we're running into mm -hmm. with AI. We're not talking about graphic arts, which also can be done. Like so, we're all talking about text. But the same abilities are coming about for all of you who are new in the room. The same ability is coming out to be able to create graphics where you can feed the same information and create graphics, which is a whole other Twitter space. But a lot of people are starting to say, who wrote this? Who's the author? You got it from online. Is this plagiarized? So there's a lot of questions coming down the pipeline. But I will say we dealt with it in photography as well. Um, got a lot of pushback that if, you know, that um, it, it, minimized the value of film photography you barely right. can sell a, a photograph anymore for big money like they used in the old days with national geographic right. because there's just so much available online so i kind of wanted to put this part of it in here and uh so that all of you can kind of have an idea about the, the bigger picture plus the small picture yeah it's the hybrid of the person and the ai and the person and the ai that's what it is you know i just gave it a um i'm just doing a YouTube video of a magic routine. And I want to get across the idea that some, most things that we consider to be impossible aren't. And so I'm going to show you a whole bunch of impossible things. And in the hope that you will believe, you know, you will realize that the seemingly impossible almost is, is, is almost is never impossible. So it, I asked it to write me a script and it said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me tonight. I'm about to perform a magic routine that will demonstrate the seemingly impossible is often just a matter of perspective. And in this routine, I'll be using an invisible coin. Now, I know what you're thinking, an invisible coin. 
this teach this sounds impossible, but trust me with a little bit of magic and some sleight of hand, anything is possible. And tonight I'm going to prove it to you. Now that sounds good, but I can tell you as an expert magician and an inventor of magic tricks, if, if a student of magic gave me that, I'd say that's a pretty good start. I mean, that's like a high school magic kid that, 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 you know, but I'll tell you, a, a, a really good magician could take that and really make that into a really exciting, good script. So it's a good start. It's a prompt. Now, when I start to work with that, just as that is the base and start going back and forth and actually using it in a performance, I'll come up with something way beyond what I would have come up with by myself. It's important to note that it does do form, some formatting for you. I just wanted to address to what Brian yeah. said, because I've asked it to write letters for me. Um, mm -hmm. And so it actually says, dear so-and-so comma, new paragraph with the line. And, and it, it separates all the paragraphs. And at the very bottom, literally, it says, sincerely, new line, and then a spot for your name. So it will format uh, letters. And I actually taught a friend of mine who has a grade eight education. So she doesn't have a lot of written skills and is taking a course online right now and is really overwhelmed with uh formats for letters to employers she's learning how to do some bookkeeping and payroll stuff um and so she didn't learn all that formatting uh so i just told her i just showed her how to use the chat gbt literally uh on the fly in the car the other day and she she's just started doing it and she's like are you kidding i could just write employer letters to employers without worrying whether i have things left aligned or tabbed properly it's going to do all that and i'm like yep you just have but to it won't edit. violate it won't violate the rules of 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 grammar stylistically right. to emphasize things. I often violate the rules of grammar intentionally and, and deliberately as I just did. Um, and it won't, it won't do that. It'll take that stuff out. So it'll take all the juice out. You know, this brings, uh, these are really good points and they bring up a lot of questions and we had one of them in the chat. Does this threaten copywriters? And like you, like you said, Samantha, photographers went through this and now we have with Dolly, like, you know, I have photographer friends and they're like, they're pretty annoyed that, you know, Dolly's creating all of these amazing or AI um, amazing uh, graphics, but so they feel threatened as a marketer. When AI tools started coming out, me and the community, my circle of marketers, we were very threatened because like I go to a client and I'm pitching my, my services, let's say, for example, I'm pitching my services. Oh, we can do content creation for you. We can do copywriting. We can do this. Oh, um, you're charging me $3,000 when I can just go to any um, AI tool and I just pay $50 a month. So, and this is where, and a lot of us have been going through this, is that the replacement, that these tools are coming to replace us. And it's okay to feel that I would, way. That, that... I would tell it, measure my sales, measure the sales of my copy against the sales of the AI's copy. And if the AI copy yes. creates more sales, go with it. But I will bet you anything I can write better copy it, from the same point. Of... I believe that too. Right. I, I, I believe that too, because I've been in the industry for 10 years and I've seen it. I've seen how a lot of tools come and go, um, but the human touch, the human behind the brand is what matters, is what makes or breaks the brand. It's not the tools. It's the person it's behind the brand. the emotional the brand. aspect, the, the, the emotion. Exactly, exactly. It's just a tool. But one of the things that I want I want to highlight is that um, there were a couple of tools that were available to us this year and the, the previous years when it comes to copywriting specifically, like Copy AI, Jasper, so many different tools. And I have tested it. I asked it to write blogs. I have spent months to kind of generate the same content that I did, the team and I did. And it was it was just not ready to be published. We had to go through, again, like Brian, we had to go through ed re-editing. We have to fix the grammar. We have to break the paragraphs. We have to rewrite the whole thing sometimes. But, but with chat GBT3, I tested the same thing and it's better. It's better than copy AI and all of these other tools. There are like 60 copywriting tools that are available right now online mm -hmm. websites that are available for free for you to write copy but chat gpt3 came and is taking that away it's, it's it's going to be the top tier kind of content creation but how how you feel as a content creator as a marketer behind the scenes this is where you need to start leveling up this is how you can because like a lot of people 
a lot of entrepreneurs and coaches and people who are running businesses, they don't have the time to sit down and feed the chat GPT-3 or any AI tool. Um, can you write me this? Can you solo entrepreneurs? Yes, they will do that. But when you're creating so much content on the back end, you still need someone to help you. It doesn't matter if you have an entire robot next to you, that robot still needs maintenance. That robot still needs to be fed information. So as a content creator, as a copywriter or someone in the marketing industry today, and you're worried about this, don't upskill yourself, understand how these tools are working and how you can use it to help your clients as well. This is, yep. this is, this is where you stand out. But if you're going to give up and say, it's like, oh no, like, you know, th I got a shift, I got a pivot. That's all okay. But don't let a tool stop you from upskilling, upgrading and getting better clients and, and just being a better marketer or, or, or a better content creator. And for those who are solo entrepreneurs, this is a really good time to uplevel your game to to create more content use that tool to your advantage because it takes so much time to create content what people see on the on the front which is the post that took a lot of strategy and a lot of time to schedule and post and do and jason here is is, is has one of the biggest accounts and he's doing this all on his own so he is in the trenches. He knows how long this takes, how, how, mu how, t how much time consuming it is. So upskill yourself. Don't be afraid of it. Just experiment and just try and ask. Join spaces like this. Check out the new tools. And there will be a new tool every single day. Something new will come up and we'll take GBT3 out of the, I mean, chat GBT3 out of the scene and or chat GBT3 2.0. So just keep informed, learn about it and how you can use it for advantage and what are the disadvantages and how it can also break your band, brand too. That's a very important part that you need to consider too. Uh, you know, yeah, I was going to say, I seen Kiki down there. Come on up, Kiki. Yes. So um, I just want to wrap this up and just bring it back to Samantha because I don't want this to be completely irrelevant after we talk about this for another half an hour. Um, I know how um, we have been talking about creativity and all these things. Uh, and uh, I want to bring up a very important point, at least a very important point for me. Um, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we celebrated co um, the coding uh, week. Um, it was across the world. Uh, it's something that uh, many, many um, teachers and, um, and people are involved in. And uh, we spoke about digital citizenship and um, uh, how we need to be cognizant and aware uh, of uh, data. So um, I just have been um, playing uh, with uh, uh, the, uh, the chat GPT. And uh, I actually asked it to look up my profile on Twitter. And it said I'm an artificial intelligent, uh, intelligence and I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not going to go into personal data and look, look into that. So um, when I did that. I pulled that up for my students as well after we watched a relevant video regarding digital citizenship and how we're supposed to be cognizant and not give out our password, ask our parents, go to sites that we think are safe when we think that something is unsafe to walk away from it. So these are... Um, these are implementations that are simplistic. However, for a teacher, a parent, a simple person, someone who's using this simply uh, begin in, in the beginning stages, it can be used like that as well to teach um, awareness regarding data and uh, how we need to be uh, overly protective of it, um, implement double authentication, and so on and so forth. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you so much. I, had, I just had to jump in there and say that. Thanks. You, you know, uh, this makes me think that Dr. Barry, who um, spends a lot of time in the Web3 space, may have something to add to this because before we open it up for questions, I just wanted to hear, Dr. Barry, what are your thoughts on all this conversation and what's that bigger frame and bigger picture that you're feeling when you think about chat GPT and other tools like that? Yes, um, thank you, uh, Jennifer, for uh, just even for thinking about that, because it's always on my mind um, as well. I always think about uh, the bigger picture and not only how these 
technologies are going to give us better opportunities to extend ourselves and our capabilities, but how will it change our, our frame of thinking? How will it change how we interact with our, our devices around us, with other people, how we communicate with each other? Uh, you know, will that change over time? Uh, that's something on my mind, um, even in the present moment. And I'm even thinking about uh, the implications of, you know, how we simply do search with, uh, with, I guess, currently how we normally do search. So, you know, we predominantly use, you know, Google search for all of our inquiries. Um, if we have a question about something, we're searching how to, you know, do a DIY process, uh, we go to Google. But now with chat GPT, uh, you know, that's considered maybe an opportunity for, for us to uh, go beyond Google or, you know, maybe even erase Google with time uh, uh, because it is conversational. And if we can tap into that human element of how to engage with us in a way that um, is entertaining to us and that gives us the best information right away in the shortest amount of time, uh, I think ChatGPT can take us to that level. And there were actually discussions about um, potentially TikTok even erasing uh, Google um, because a lot of people were searching uh, or making searches on TikTok for recipes for, you know, how to, uh, you know, fix something around the house. And they were actually getting better information from TikTok videos than they did with Google searches. So I think ChatGPT can take us to the next level. I think it's a better way for us to, um, like I said, fill in the gaps of what we do not know and I think that's evident right now with a lot of programmers from what I've seen, uh, especially when they're trying to get jobs. I mentioned this in another space. Uh, people are actually using ChatGPT to write their uh, code during coding interviews. I'm not going to say to do that because uh, that's probably um, not the best way to go about it. But they actually use the system to write their code and um, in a way that's efficient and it gets the it, it provides a solution and they're able to get a job offer uh, from that. And they do it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I've seen chat GPT, uh, or at least um, it's being used. Someone tag tagged me in a, a video earlier. It's being used to actually negotiate with uh, with bill collectors um, on lo lowering bills. Uh, so negotiation on that end is a, a potential use case. I could see it maybe even being used in uh, drafting policies, for example, when it comes down to legislation and uh, even in politics, which is uh, another huge field of ethics that we have to, you know, consider. Uh, so I think, you know, this is just giving us an opportunity to really extend our capabilities. And like I said, even fill in the gaps of where we are and hopefully speed up um, or maybe even help mm -hmm. us save time uh, for what we normally do. And personally, for what I can use it as, as a research scientist is really, you know, summarizing all the papers that I need to read that are just coming out by the day and by the second. I can't keep up with all of the, the content information that I have to download uh, in my mind all the time because AI is just moving so fast. So with tools like ChatGPT, where I just need something quick, um, quick information on, you know, what happened today, what's useful for my field uh, in robotics, uh, how can I, uh, you know, get the the bit of information that I need to add into my paper here and there, who to reference, ChatGPT can be an option mm -hmm. for, for that as well. And I think, as Jennifer said, in the Web3 space, I think it's just going to continue to advance what we have already seen so far and giving people the option to to monetize their own content, to own their own content, uh, to have agency in that space and to have um, a unique voice to to propagate that forward. I think that's what chat, chat GPT can be as a tool mm -hmm. and as a resource. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Sure, where that applause is coming from. <laughs> Jazz, I have a doctors. I have a question for you that I think some other people are wondering. So, like, what you're saying now is that you can ask it questions, except for at a much more intelligent uh, level for yourself, for yourself, like than you can from a Google search. So, I have a question for you. Do you, is it less biased than Google? So, Google is generated by who's paying the most money for the top spots. Now, right now, mm. chat GPT doesn't have that. So a couple questions. Do you think that Google, the ads are going to start to come into place and is going to put mm. certain answers uh, first before other ones? Or, and like right now is it kind of raw? Like it's not, it's not, it does it account even for what's ranked on Google? How does, how does That's it actually very, give you the answers? That's a very I put a lot bad. in there, sorry. From all the way no. to, is it going to get corrupted by marketing? To, no, no, we're getting its information question. and what does it prioritize? 
Right, right. No, that's an excellent question. Excellent question, actually. Um, so to my knowledge and um, anyone who may um, think I'm, I'm incorrect on this, just feel free to let me know. But I get to my knowledge, I think it's really prioritizing what it sees in in mass across the across the web. Uh, so whatever it sees in terms of uh, uh, ranking and content or whatever it sees the most, it kind of uh, aggregates all that information together. And that's how it prioritizes uh, what you see first, rather than, like you said, who is paying uh, what or how much a person is paying. How, so I do think in the future, I think ads will always try to find a way to creep in everything and anything that we consume. Uh, so I do think that's going to be a lane, a future lane that's going to be open um, uh, that I can see, uh, which you know, that it may taint our, our answers or taint what we get in, in terms of responses. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as I can see, definitely that's that's something we'll need to be mindful of. Uh, whoever is going to be paying the top dollar, uh, that's what you're going to be getting. Unless, you know, like with other versions like YouTube TV, for example, if you pay a subscription, maybe that can reduce the ads that you see while you're using uh, chat GPT. Uh, so that's where I can see a payment model uh, coming in or a price model. Uh, but, you know, it's I, will, I don't want to even say that is completely vanilla right now. I think um, there are filters in place on the system to prevent you from seeing uh, maybe like vulgar answers to certain questions that you may put in uh, so that you don't get uh, responses that are um, a little bit uh, too jarring for some people or maybe even bias or have uh, racial context, negative racial context to it. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, it's it's just a matter of time before ads creep into this. It's just, um, you know, have fun using it while we can in the moment, <laughs> I should say. You're you're absolutely right. And you know what? While I was listening to you, that got me thinking, like right now we have it open. Like I just I just went to my chat GPT-3 and I, I just asked it a pancake recipe. And in less than a minute, I got a really good pancake recipe like I'm actually gonna go use that one but for real that, that was very fast so yes I could see it replacing Google and I could see other um, social media platforms using this instead of just people going straight to Google and YouTube might die as well but what got me thinking um, is how this is going to be controlled in packages for example uh, just bear with me yeah because this is new and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing it in, in the spot. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to ask you when you, when you sign up to this, it's going to ask you, are you a marketer? Is this for business? Is this for uh, military use? Is this, is the, uh, you know, different packages. And then from there, if you use like, let's say uh, marketing or a teacher, let's say teacher, and then it will give you information that you can get out of it only for teaching. Or if it's marketing, then I can only use it for marketing and, uh, and so on and so forth. And this is kind of where they could expand this, that it can only be available for certain uses. And then this is when, you, like you said, packages like, for example, military and, and, poli and politicians will have different access to the AI than what, mm -hmm. what we normal people have access to. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Absolutely, because it's like with um, even modern day apps that we use, when you first sign on to an app, it usually asks you personal information, like um, how old are you? Are you male or female? Uh, you know, what's your, uh, maybe your occupation or job. And it's really kind of setting up um, like prerequisites for how to, uh, I don't want to even say, maybe like bias certain information towards you when you're using the app. So it's kind of setting up the model uh, for what you're going to expect to see uh, when you're engaging in the app. So it's, uh, those are kind of like priors that we have in the system to determine what is the best possible information to give to you based on who you are, what your characteristics are. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that form, that way of thinking or that way of getting information from you, um, it's already in apps that we use today. So I could definitely see that um, in the, in the way that Gia just described and giving you certain information that's tailored specifically for uh, your your unique interests. What it's going to also do is it you you can give it permission it, it, very soon. You can't do it now, but you're going to be able to say read the contents of my entire computer. It will know every uh -huh. it'll know everything about <laughs> you and so and tell me and write yes. some articles from me or go and look at my what's in my Obsidian file, uh, my tool for thought. Uh, I've got a huge number of notes. It's, and write me some articles based on that. Can I give you a use case? You're like training your brain, basically. Yep, right, you can train it right, to be right. your brain. Can I give you a yeah, use but case? Yeah, isn't that like, yep. 
like Siri. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. George. Like Siri, like how you train right. Siri to right. learn your music and, and, right. and your voice. Right. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Can I give you a, 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 yes, yes. a, a, a case ahead. study of how to use it as a writer? How I used it as a writer? Mm -hmm. uh, for, but first, I, I, I just want to draw an analogy. I think what it's going to do is, is, do you remember a few years ago, there was a guy called the Masked Magician who revealed all the magic tricks on television? And YouTube also reveals all the magic tricks. Any, any magic trick you want to learn how to do, any of the famous magic tricks, you can go on to Google and learn how to do it. The hack magicians went crazy over it because they thought it would ru ruin, ruin their performances. And it did. Thank God. It was wonderful. It was the best thing that ever happened to magic. It brought it to a new level because you couldn't do any magic for teenagers anymore because they had, they had looked at all the Google, Google uh, you know, videos on how to do those things. But the really good ones said, okay, now I know what the, how, how the spectator thinks I'm doing it. I'm just going to do it in another way. And it'll blow them away 10 times more. And that's what happened in magic. So it, it elevated the entire, the, the entire profession of magic by, by, by getting rid of all the, all the crap. So everybody had to reinvent all their magic tricks. Um, but I want to give you an idea of how to use it as a writer. I was just writing a chapter on problem solving, the, my, my chapter on problem solving in the Mind Skills Playbook. And I've been studying problem solving for decades. I have no idea how, what people think a problem is, um, how they think it should be solved, what their attitudes toward problems are, or anything like that. I have just no idea. So I ran some spaces, and I got some ideas about, about that. But then I asked GPT-3, it wasn't chat GPT, but I asked GPT-3, what is a problem? write me an essay on problems and it wrote me a good coherent essay, but it was completely what people, the conventional view of problems. It was again, plain vanilla. It was nothing. Um, it was nothing more than you could go and look up in a million books. Then chat PT three came along. I put that back in there and I said, Oh, and then I started arguing with it. I said, okay, you think a problem is a undesirable situation that calls for attention that you have to get rid of. That's a negative view of a problem. What about challenges and opportunities? Could they be problems? And it said, yes, that they could, that you could expand the conventional view of problem solving to bring it to challenges and opportunities. So I said, how? And it gave me a bunch of other stuff that prompted my thinking. And that now, so now I could write the article and say, the convention, you know, I, I know what you think a problem is. It's this, 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 and this. That's the conventional view of it. And if you approach a problem, viewing a problem that way, you will solve almost none of them. You can't do it that way. You can't. So I then took off from what it gave me and I put on what I had learned about it by studying it, in, you know. So, but it with with me, and it, it's a much better chapter than just me, because I was really start, able to start from where people are. So basically, I wanted it to write conventional writing. I didn't want it to write anything brilliant. Hi, I have a question. Yes. Hey, Ray. Thank you for. Uh, I would love some reactions to what I said what I before, said. before you go off on another tangent, though. I'm not going on a tangent. Okay. I'm just I'm just, okay. I'm just curious um, about you guys. You talk about um, the AI and what it's doing, but you don't say who owns it. Um, you don't speak about um, that it, because it's an AI, it knows more about you than you know about yourself. So I'm sure it's researched you already with your name and everything. So it, you, I don't know what tense you're talking about because I think you're saying, well, yeah, it's given this kind of information, but you know, AI is very quick. 
So it has already found out so much about you just by your name. So whatever answers it's going to give you, it already has your characteristic in there. That's number two. Number three is just that, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm ready for it, but I, I, I tried it. And I think it's very interesting. I didn't do the pro and you guys didn't describe the difference between just regular, you know, um, chat GPT, then pro GPT. So those were the three questions. Is that to the point, George? No, I just wanted some reactions to what I said, but go ahead. I don't think it's true though, that it, it can, it, it can go and research you if it's, if if you've done some public writing since before 71, so I mean in a 2001, 2021, sorry. Um, um, it, you know, it, 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 but eventually it's going to be able to go and you can name any subject and it'll go out and read 10 books on it in 10 seconds. It's, it's, it, but George, I think you, you don't get that, that it is reading you and you don't know that. I, I, Dr. M, what do you think? Hey, um, I was going to say, um, if you found something that has a pro version, then that's not ChatGPT. So this thing is free. Um, you got to right. go to that website address. Um, it was, uh, what was it? Uh, I always have it pulled up these days. Uh, open, uh, chat.openai.com. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, so actually, um, it's, you know, I would love it to be um, like on the fly training, meaning like... Um, that the training didn't stop, uh, you know, uh, whenever they were done training it. Um, I think one of the limitations of these models is that um, uh, uh, they're not live training. Like I would love it to um, to learn as we go, um, and also to um, to be basically um, live, meaning that um, it is aware of the latest information. Uh, but it's not. It's also not uh, really like um, learning from you or it's not really um, uh, modifying anything uh, about itself, depending right, on your interaction. Right. But, um, but the, the OpenAI right. team might use um, uh, those interactions to uh, improve it. Yeah, I'll definitely say it's, it's learning to a certain extent. Like Dr. M said, it's not learning to the point where it's going to... Um, um, it does change in real time. And like if you tell it to correct itself on a certain answer, it, it can correct itself in that moment. But I think the actual model that the that ChatGPT is based on, the overall model is not going to drastically change uh, while you're using it. Uh, that's going to be another iteration that comes out. But it is learning, or the engineers behind behind it are learning from you. They're learning how you interact with the system, your prompts, how you ask it questions, and then they're going to use that to make the the future iteration a lot better. I was just going to add real quick in terms of costs and advertisers. Coming down the pipeline, I've seen a couple of different reports that the burn rate of Chad GBT is averaging about three million per day. Uh, so that goes to show it's right. coming fast and furious. In other words, it's costing three, three, two to three million dollars a day, I think, to run yeah. Chat Chat GPT. So that's what they're losing so far. Uh, on this well, note, they charge everybody. Uh, George, they it cost them three point two billion dollars to make it. So that money was not a donation. Right. It will be recuperated, um, likely via advertising. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. And usage uh, fees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ray, cool. does that answer your question? Because uh, cool. we have more requests coming, and uh, we're yeah, kind of I just out wanted to know because, who who made uh -huh. the who made the bot. Who made it? Was it MIT? Who Open made it? AI. And was it China? Um, was it made in America? In Nest. I put in the Nest that OpenAI is governed by the board of the nonprofit, and it's Greg Brockman. It's uh, invested by Microsoft, Reed Hoffman's Charitable Foundation. So if you go to who's involved, it tells you who's involved. And I did put that inside of the Nest to but answer yeah, your question. It's American. Uh, it's an American so, nonprofit company. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. The, those were the three questions I had. Thank you so much. I love this. Thank you thank so you, much, Ray. Ray. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're learning a lot today from this space. And thank you for being here with us and being patient. I saw your request since we started. Thank you so much for being patient.
I had, I'm sorry. I had one more question. It was, what is the legal, what's the legal um, things that go on with the AI, you know, because you guys didn't talk about the legal aspect because I know it's all about business and contracts. What is the legal aspect? What's the pros and cons about that? That would be the last question. I think that specific? needs its own space, don't you? Because that's a big question. Absolutely. That's a great that's question. Too, too I think huge. it needs its own space. Mm -hmm. yep. I was going to ask if you could yeah, provide like a more context for Nick to that. Yeah. Is it possible to provide more context as far as what type of uh, legal legalities you're you're referring to there? I think we're going to get too deep into it. Okay, just making sure. Um, I would, I would also say maybe it's um even in a lot of ways, at least right now, it's um in a lot, of, it's probably too early to see any legal documents on ChatGPT and how it's being used because it's just going so fast. Um, the the development of it. So, it seems like uh, anything related to AI, the law always comes later after, um, uh, after the AI has already been deployed. So. Dr. Jasmine, it's Indra here. I just had a question that um, came up today and, and I had no idea to, how to answer it uh, with my writers, but I also think it pertains to uh, many of us who are content creators and just in general writers as well, journalists, everyone else. Um, is So their question was, well, particularly in the film and television industry, um, this unique idea concept. They were concerned that if they if they plug into the to AI their original concept their idea is that going to be shared out and absorbed by AI and and maybe it's going to turn up somewhere else you know like another another movie is is has the same uh, idea or has the same framework it, it just the nuances of the movie are reflected almost a hundred percent but just little bits of dialogue and things are different. I mean, is this even possible? I, they were very concerned about that aspect and that might even be the same thing for content creators. Yes, so I'm gonna repeat your question just to make sure I understood it. Is it possible for the AI to pick up, um, like you said, the nuances or someone's story and then you know propagate that to, to other people who may be using the same AI? Um, so definitely, I think that's a, a possibility if you're interacting with the system. Like I said, the AI, as much as we're learning from it, it is learning from us uh, and, and what we talk about, what we discuss and the nuances. And it uses that to, to build on its own knowledge base uh, as well. And since there is no filter on you know, maintaining secrecy, uh, it can definitely share that information with others uh, incidentally. Right. And Wait, can I, I will even say... Yeah. I will, oh, wait, George, let me uh, finish this last point. Ahead, um, sorry. I'll, I'll also say with Dali, for example, um, a lot of artists were complaining because uh, uh, the system that Dali was trained on or the model that Dali was trained on, uh, it did scrape images from the web. Um, a lot of artists who created you know, graphics uh, put their images out there for people to see, and that's how Dali learned how to uh, you know, make pixels, for example, by looking at other artists' work and then when we use it, we're creating images and it kind of picks up those nuances from what it's seen um, other graphic designers create. So I definitely could see that in parallel happening with, uh, like you said, storylines, uh, scripts, uh, people who are you know, creating movie ideas. Um, so I, that's, that's something to be mindful of as well. Thank you so much. Hope that answered your question. Yes. It also, Indrid, you can... Did anybody awesome. notice we have 17 speakers? I think they've yeah. changed the uh, the speaker limit in uh, no, spaces. There's, there's 17. I think it's still 12. Um, Indra, yeah. you can also I, ask it to use a special a certain voice, or like if you wanted to say create a script using Steven Spielberg style, it will pick up anything that's been published um, with his name on it and make an adjustment. So it's like this fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, this fiction software I was trying out, you can tell it to pick certain authors and write it in a way that sounds like them. Or I can upload, like if I wanted to upload all of Leonardo da Vinci's work, I could ask it questions or ask it to produce using his voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, and I think that's the thing, um, the concern that um, I, I can definitely speak for the writers, um, concerns about their unique ideas 
um, the way they might structure a story and if that would if that would just turn up somewhere else. And, and the same could be for even many of us content creators, the same kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. So the question is, how can we protect our work, um, protect what's ours, if you want to call it intellectual property, for example, how can we protect that so that other people can't take that idea and monetize it and run with it? Uh, so that's going to be a whole different field. Uh, like like we said earlier, this could probably be another space that we could talk about um, in, in, in its entirety. So we've got some questions, some folks with their hands raised. Um, I believe that we suppose was uh, has been waiting the longest and then we'll go to um, Vo We. Oops. Hey, can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, yes, yes. Sorry. Sorry, guys. So real quick, George, I did acknowledge what you were speaking about and listened in, in, in your, you know, what I'm understanding is it's useful to you for, for writing certain things. But I want to say one thing, like with AI, it's, it's in its infancy still. And the algorithms um, that they're following are, are very similar to like what social media has been using for a long time. And as advanced as it's getting, I don't think it's a direct threat. I think that in, the important thing is to tailor your marketing approach. Um, I know I have over 2,000 accounts with just auto dealerships alone uh, that I do marketing for. And I, I can honestly say that it's still in its infancy. Uh, a lot of um, businesses still want that personal touch. And I, I mean, as, as much as I hate to say it, yeah, it, it is starting to go away. But if you're good at what you do, um, I think that you could tailor your approach. And in, in, I, I don't think it's even close to like what you can do with as far as pulling inventory, you know, pulling different things that need to be done uh, from a marketing standpoint. It's just not there yet. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what about uh, you? Bobby? Also, one, one more thing I wanted to quickly add is um, as far as uh, data goes, uh, you know, when you accept terms and conditions, I know there's a lot of legalities, but, you know, if you read the fine print, obviously, a, a lot of times you're opening yourself up to basically being data mined. Uh, and data is actually the most valuable asset in the world. Uh, it's not a currency yet, but I'm sure it will become one. Awesome. Thanks for that contribution. We really appreciate it. So just to let everyone know in the room, uh, we're going to be switching over to celebrating mode really soon. So if you'd like to chime in and you're on stage already, any more about chat GBT before we before we switch to uh, celebrating Twitter spaces, uh, just put your hand up. We don't always do that, but we just want to make sure we know who's who want to, to chime in on the chat part, chat GPT, before we switch over. So we've got Chris and, and Boo Woo. I'm not sure how to say your name there. So uh, Boo Woo, we, sorry, if you could just tell us who you are and then uh, maybe try to stick to one question or contribution, we'd really appreciate that. Then we're over to Chris. Um, evening, everyone. Um, Good evening. It's morning on my side. Um, I'm on the other side of the world. Um, you pronounce it Bowie, like Bobo. Um, so the oh. VHO pronounce it as a B-O. So it's a oh, Bowie. Yes. Oh, we like that. the yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've got like 20 questions. So for you to say one question, I think I'd have to use chat um, GPT to, to somehow summarize all my questions. But um, <laughs> let, let me try. Good. That's a good use case right there. <laughs> Gia, I, 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 I applaud you for your admin skills. I think everybody just needs to give her a clap. Um, the amount of chat that's going on in the background and still keeping up with what's going on in the space I think we should just hold a space on how do you do it. Um, <laughs> I don't think even chat GPT. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you man. It's coming. It's coming up soon. I'm 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 starting a new season on Twitter Spaces and social audio. So stay tuned. It's starting on January. So uh, stay tuned and just uh, keep an eye 
on this account right here. But thank you so look, much. Look, I appreciate that. Thank you. Look at that. I didn't even have to ask Chat Chat GPI to 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 get that answer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, on to my question, um, guys. The OpenAI is spending about three million or so. I think three to about five million. But your data is more important than that money. So we are basically feeding the AI, and later on we're going to pay for that information that we fed. So it's 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 very interesting. M my question is, I'm looking at where it's going. What are the top three industries that you think um, automation could use? Because I think AI makes us question about what we do. Is that what is so special about what you do that automation cannot? Um, uh, um, take over. So in your own personal business, what do you think are the top three industries or within your business that automation really needs to um, um, take over? For me as an as a entrepreneur, I am really excited about it because it's like hiring a personal assistant who knows everything and not having to do the legwork for a lot of things. So I'm not even fearful. I'm just excited and thinking what are the other possibilities that I can use it for. So I'd say get excited. It was Fervut who said adapt or die. And I don't think any of us want to face any death. So let's adapt, embrace this thing and use it where we can. Yeah. So my question, top industries that really need automate automation. So clearly the creative industry is, is, is one of it, but in your business, what is that? Thank you. Do you mind if I answer that question? Go ahead. So, hey, this is Chris. It's been a while since I've been on Twitter uh, Spaces, so it's been nice to, nice see, to you. see a lot of familiar Chris, faces. Chris, I'm trying not to fan girl hey. scream that you're. <laughs> so, it, just to get to the to the meat of that question, I think that, in my opinion, the three things in business world that are going to be the most affected is customer service. I mean, if you think about what open AI is doing, they're selling a product while we're playing around with a with a, a model that's basically used sort of in, in the realm of Google. It's not really what chat GPT is here to prove. They've basically proven beyond a reasonable doubt that it is a viable product. Um, so customer service for me is one big aspect, you know, where you got call into a company and you ask for help, it's very likely that it's something like this could be used to basically get you to where you need to be in a more effective means than what's currently being served. Um, so I could see businesses buying into something that uses chat uh, GPT as a operator model. Uh, logistics is another, uh, both of, the same thing from a business standpoint, you call in, you say, hey, I ordered something. I want to track my package. You know, you don't have to have a human do that. It could be something that could be done with a system like this. Also, um, I think educational space as well. Uh, and that's not necessarily business related, but I think this is going to severely impact uh, education in, a, in, a, in, a, in an interesting way. So I, I guess the main reason why I wanted to speak uh, about uh, chat GPT and AI in general is the fact I'm very encouraged uh, by what its possibilities are. And, you know, I think we need to really kind of have a good understanding of what its purpose is. It, it is not currently tracking personal information. It's not designed to do that. Uh, it's merely taking from, you know, whatever resources it's using and trying to find the most relevant answer. It's, it's proof model, uh, in the future, it could be used for things like that to, you know, scrape information about users. But I don't think that's their goal in the in, for the long game. Right now, it's just a tool, and I think that we shouldn't be scared of it uh, in any way, shape, or form. But we need to understand that just like Google was a tool that people became scared of, and personal information became very easy to find. I remember in early two thousands. You could literally type in someone's name, their address in their city, and it would spit back the person's phone number, their address, the email addresses they use. And eventually, they started to basically make it a little bit more difficult for you to find that type of information. It wasn't just readily available. Um, you know, I, I think 
we just have a big misunderstanding of the capabilities of chat GPT and just AI in general. But uh, if we look at it as a tool, I think that, you know, it could be used for, for some really cool things. So I don't want to keep on rambling, but um, I've been using it a lot with my kid. Um, he is uh, ADHD and it's very difficult. He's like a squirrel in headlights, you know. So the, so the second he gets to do homework, he's just completely lost. But with chat GPT, I was able to basically sit down and say, I want you to tell this computer what your question is that you're trying to solve as a homework assignment. And it did. It literally just gave him the answer. Uh, and, and, and for me, I'm okay with that because one, um, there's many teachers who teach in this way where they literally give you the answer to the test while you're taking the test. And then you literally go over the answers. And, you know, I think it, while it's, could be considered cheating by some teachers. You know, hey, you you're literally just typing in with the question and getting an answer. You still have to give citations. You still have to go prove what it's saying to be true. And I think if if I'm a teacher at this point and I'm kid says to me, hey, I did your homework last night using Chat GPT, and I'm gonna say that's great, but make sure you understand that whatever came out of Chat GPT is not proven because it does not give you direct citations. You know, while you could say, hey, give me um, a Supreme Court case and tell me what it's a summarization of, you, know, you could certainly trust that. And that's just as much as maybe somebody can trust uh, Wikipedia. But you have to understand, I think there's just a big unknown with chat GPD, and I'm super excited about it. And uh, I'm just looking forward to all the really cool things we're going to be able to use in the future, especially for my kids. So I'll stop talking now because I'm like the Energizer Bunny. You get me talking, I won't stop. Uh, that was um, that was a really, really good summary on everything we spoke about today. And I hope that helped answer your question, Voe, because uh, w this is a whole different space as well. Like this is a, a new topic on its own. We could run like a three hour space on this, actually. Automations, because I used to run chatbots uh, manually for brands and appointment setters for coaches and things like that. So I'm exploring the possibilities and how it can adapt uh, how chat GBT can be used that way. So um, I hope that answered your question. We have uh, two questions uh, left from our speakers, and then we're moving on to the Twitter Spaces Experts Day. So go ahead, uh, Greg. Greg, I know it's so late for you here, and thank you so much for being patient with us. Appreciate your presence. Oh, that's okay. I'm not in England. I'm I still got the accent, but I've been in the States twenty six years. I'm in Ohio. Oh. But <laughs> okay. uh, I shared a post earlier on the chat GPT that uh, someone had used it to write WordPress code using basic English and to write a uh, basic code for a WordPress plugin. And it did a pretty good job. There was some security vulnerabilities, but when he asked it to uh, to go through that for a non and for authorization checks it picked up on the um, the errors in it and was able to self-correct. So I thought that was a pretty interesting use case. Um, I haven't, you know, thought about it for using it for code. And then earlier on, I was just playing around and I said, give me a list of 20 suppliers that sell British goods online that have an affiliate program, include their contact information or websites. And he did a pretty good job at that. So it's, it's pretty... Uh, pretty terrific what it can do and I, I can't really wait to see what's going to come next like george was saying it's like gpt3 on uh, steroids maybe 3.5 and if uh, if that's anything to go by and when they bring out gpt4 oh my goodness i think you know the world will, will definitely be a different place the day after so that's all i had i just thought Absolutely. it was an interesting use place for for code you know so yeah Thank you so much, Greg. This this was a really, really good point. And I love your insight every time you come up here and share with us. We appreciate you. And I love what you do for uh, the NGOs and foundation, and especially education as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, All right. Oh, go ahead, Samantha. Uh, George was just asking me in the back channel to, to share one of the things that I tried while we were in the space here. So I went and opened a opened a tab and I to I typed in write an award-winning bio on Samantha Postman because I'm always like stuck doing my own bios it's the hardest thing ever to write your own bios um and it like literally just spit out 
uh, went and did a, re a search of anything that's been said about me, plus my own website, and then just spit it all out nice and it's all grammar done with proper sentences and paragraphs. But can you re uh, can you read it to us? Um, it starts out with uh, Samantha Postman is a driven and ambitious polymath with a passion for deep for a deep love of learning and exploring new ideas with a background in both arts and sciences she has a unique perspective that allows her to approach challenges from multiple angles which i didn't know that was anywhere even on the internet and then See, just that's a, that is a terrible twitter profile absolutely terrible it's what, it's right what a high school student would write it's terrible i didn't write it, twitter it's profile. accurate I, winning bio so this would be like oh, bio that, it's yeah, still bio. terrible bio for twitter because it doesn't tell what <laughs> you can do for her. anybody i'm just saying that like if i'm i'm on podcast I know. and sometimes i have to send a bio in and i could tailor this a bio that emphasizes let's say you know my finance knowledge so that i could get it to edit for that yes it's so, a good start of what you're saying it's a good start absolutely but it's terrible as it is it also would be good when you have guests coming on for us content oh. creators you want to start if you've got a guest you can type the person mm. in and and say ask what it you can ask it different questions to her add parameters if you want to be more specific and you pretty much just wrote their bio and your inter either your introduction of them on one year on one of your uh, podcasts or anything. Oh, I cannot wait to experiment with this in my show. This is going to be amazing. This is really really good. And bios and things. George, you can do this in your space on Saturdays. Human well, yeah, human, human Twitter bio versus there, there is AI one. Bio. There there is yes there is a <clears throat> separate one. I don't know which AI it uses. But it, it specifically writes Twitter bios, and the bunch of us who do the Twitter bio, the Twitter profile spaces on Saturday morning, uh, the four of us have been discussing it in the back channel and doing testing of it, and it's pretty damn good. It's not as good as we are, but it's pretty damn good. It's a good start. And when somebody comes on, <clears throat> excuse me, and rambles about themselves, uh, it's pretty you know, we could we could take that out of the Twitter, uh, you know, sorry, the the Otter transcript. I can grab it right out of the Otter transcript, put in that wordy, convoluted, vague, ambiguous description. Bang! It'll put something out that's really, really good. And again, the, it, it's eighty percent, but what they had was two percent. And then we can tune it up from there. Benny in, on there is unbelievable copywriter, and he can he can tune it up in no time. Oh, we that sounds this, fabulous! What about actually, yep. We could use this in faces. You know, when people want to come up and talk, and depending on the subject, we could literally just quickly go and ask Chat GPT about the person. It'll give us a pretty general idea of who they are online. It'll like accumulate everything about that person online. You could probably you could probably hook it into Otter GPI and. And when somebody rambled, you could you could say, "What the hell did he just say?" Sure. And and it would summarize it in one sentence. I once put in a long, convoluted paragraph of uh, Nicholas Lerman, uh, who wrote about Zettelkasten. Uh, he wrote seventy books, uh, sociologist. It was a long, convoluted. I didn't know. Somebody told me that paragraph was really important. So I read it and I reread it. I read it 10 times. I had no idea what the hell it said. I put it in GPT-3. This was months ago. And bang, it came out with three sentences. I said, okay, I get it. That is what he was saying. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, we got to go to hate them before we move on to our celebrating. Thanks for your uh, handed contributions, George. <laughs> <laughs> What an amazing space. What an amazing space. I've been just listening to all the ideas, to what people have done with it. Man, uh, my name is Haytham Hamour. I'm from Austin, Texas. And uh, kind of like I've been looking forward for this space because I knew the minds in this space are going to come up with crazy, amazing idea. I like the idea of like having a wrap between Kia and and then George, that's that's an interesting <laughs> one. I never th I never thought about that. 
uh, the bio one, Samantha, also a great one because uh, I joined the company recently and they asked me like, hey, send us a bio. It took me like three hours or four hours to write that bio. It's just like less than 250 words. So, so I was like, man, I'm so stupid. Why I never thought of like using chat to keep it, either. kind of like uh, at least inspire me or kind of like get rid of that uh, writing block from my mind. The other thing that I want to kind of like talk about is like, uh, and that was like my, what my question was around is what Chris mentioned. Uh, and thank you for mentioning that because I have a, an autistic son and I have ADD as well. So I was thinking like chat GPT right now is just the first step. Literally it's the first step. Yep. They're going to be, a, they're going to be a lot of models and those models are going to talk to each other. So imagine yep. that. They're going to be visual models. They're going to be all like uh, models with audio and visuals. So my son, for example, uh, one of the things that I've noticed about him, he can literally mimic a whole episode of any cartoon and make a video about it, like using a phone. If he, and like even his pronunciation is amazing when he does that. But when he, when he speaks to human, it's different for him he struggles. So I thought like, you know what? Yeah. Like somewhere in the future, people with the same. You all, uh, chat, GPT, they can talk to, they can help them around. Same thing for people who have, uh, like, uh, in, like I was thinking also about like people who are like, uh, deaf or muted. So those two as well gonna have like uh, also like uh, benefit from. But think about that. The other, the other, and the last thing I don't want to like take a lot of time and ramble. But the other one is right now, limited with the power of computing that we have right now. But also imagine the quantum computing coming alive and becoming available and running all those. Things are going to be super, super, super fast, way faster than we can ever imagine. And that's going to fuel those models. So thank you for the amazing space, and uh, I'll continue listening. Thank you. Nice to have Haytham up and hear your contributions. Like what you said, it's going to be amazing for just writer getting rid of um, or helping us bridge writer's gap as well as for our our up and coming students especially those who struggle with traditional schooling methods mm, this is a really amazing use case that i haven't heard of yet and i would love to explore that like this is something we definitely need to address thank you so much haitham would you like to hear a poem in regards of twitter spaces in twitter Ooh. created by chat gpt yes right on time because we're about to celebrate our anniversary Let's go. All right, great. Twitter, oh, Twitter, platform of wit, where <laughs> thoughts and words are shared in bits. A haven for the clever and the wise, where social audio doth off arise. In 240 characters or less, we share our thoughts with finesse. But with the power <laughs> of social audio, we can share our thoughts with aural glow. Listeners tune in with ears so keen to hear the musings of the Twitter queens. Her voice doth ring with clarity and grace, and she shares her thoughts with the human race. Twitter, oh Twitter, thou art a delight, a place to share, to listen, and to write. With social audio, the possibilities abound to share our thoughts with all around. So let us tweet and listen with glee on this platform of wit and levity. Twitter, oh Twitter, thou art our delight, forever, in day, and night. Whoa. Oh my God. That is the power of chat GPT on something that has very little definition when you look at the words social audio. And it not only took the word social audio and used it in such a levity, it's just crazy it, it's... of how amazing that is. Mm hmm. This is, this is, this is, post that, Chris, post that. We need that. I will share yeah. it. Yeah, I'll share it. Uh, yeah, we got to do another. We got to do another space with more of these use cases, more of these 
actual reading these things and trying them and uh, brainstorming ideas and then putting them into GBT3 in real time. We'll yes. do that. Yes, we Ooh, definitely that. need we need we need a space like that. See, we introduced the space as uh, again, it was just impromptu like we were just discussing and talking about it and they were like you know what let's start a space and then it was our anniversary and then um i just posted like i just shared a couple of questions very basic questions and it exploded into new and more in-depth avenues of chat gbt that i think will make an entire series um just from what we shared today this is amazing yes Chris, can you put the uh, poem in the chat so that it stays, yep. not the nest? I'm going to do that. It, I'm just the posting chat itself. it now. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. So the, for anybody who doesn't know, the chat stays. You just have to find the card. It'll be on the, in Gia's profile. Just a quick note before we switch over. For any of you who are trying out the chat, the new it is getting updated as we go along. And now it's starting to save your searches. So one, of course, they're data mining. But it's very nice for you. So like at first I was copying and pasting my prompts and my answers over into another database, Rome Research is which I use right now mm -hmm. for Tools for Thought. Um, however, so just so you know that you can actually create like a chat thread where you can ask it similar questions and have it into a thread. And then it will actually mm -hmm. create a title for you now based on the the prompts that you put inside of that those chat requests. So I just want to kind of put that out there that they are saved mm -hmm. now. Right. And it's now called the Chubble, the Chat Bubble. Ah, Chubble. <laughs> the Chubble. <laughs> awesome. All right, Gia, take her away for the next segment. Yes, uh, I was saying that last week someone mentioned that the Chubble, so this is our new word now. It's the chat in a bubble. Oh, yeah, it was Farmer in the Dell, Craig. It was Farmer in the Dell. Uh, right, right. <laughs> All right, I'm waiting for Haytham to come up to join us as part of the Twitter Spaces experts. Okay, there he is. So for everyone today who joined us in this uh, amazing, amazing discussion and exploration session with uh, ChatGPT, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, the people who were speaking today were all part of the Twitter Spaces experts, were a group of people, uh, random people on the internet, and we met on Twitter Spaces, on random spaces on Twitter streets, and we became really good friends, and we started a chat group, and uh, it's been how long now? A year plus, actually more than a year, and... Um, We've been together all of this time. We have a lot of projects together. We worked on a lot of projects together. And uh, we became more than friends. Actually, I trust these people with my life now. <laughs> and uh, so today is our anniversary, and we're going to celebrate by sharing our journey with you, what we learned from Twitter Spaces, uh, how we started and where we are now, and uh, our takeaways before we start the new year, and what are we looking forward to next year, and if... Uh, any one of you guys have any show coming up or you're pivoting to a new chapter. So this is what we're sharing today. I'm so happy to have you here, guys. And as a last space for 2022, all of us together, this is amazing. This brings so many memories. Well, I'll say that seeing Chris join us was like a reunion. I felt like we had just a mini family reunion because we haven't been able to hear Chris and see Chris in a space in a really long time. So it's a real pleasure. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Hey, no worries. I've been trying to figure out how to get back involved, but it's one of those things. It's an uphill battle. And for anybody out there who, you know, may be struggling with personal lives and things going on around them, just understand that it's okay to take time away from social audio to uh, make sure your life is on track before you come back, if that makes any sense. Also, we just want to make sure that we acknowledge that there's only 12, 12 spaces on the top on the speaker stage, and there are more than 12 of us uh who are listed as the top 22 experts to follow for 2022 in addition to some others. So I just want to recognize that they're all the people on the speaker panel, as well as down in on the listener end, just simply because we can't put everyone up, bring everyone up on stage. We've got Dan Roder there and Michael Sterling and Bunsen and B Jason of Bunsen and Beaker, um, who was the, who is a pioneer in all of this. So just to acknowledge that there's, there's more of us than what you see, who you see. 
there we go. They're putting their hearts up there. <laughs> yes, we are 22. We are a group of 22 people and I added it up on the nest. So this was um, our last year's anniversary, I think. And uh, we're here together. We're in a, it's a big group, like Samantha said, we can bring everyone up. Some of them are busy, but um, yes, we're here together. So let's go, let's share how we, where we were and where you are right now and uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll hop in here while I've got the mic and uh, a clear running board. Yeah, I so I, I spent a year and uh, it's been difficult, but I, I've avoided accomplishing anything. Uh, for 12 months, uh, no, the truth is, um, in terms of the spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, and financial, I, I've I've made gains across the board, and I admit this morning, I didn't hit any of my goals uh, at all this year, but I also didn't have any setbacks. And, um, you know, they, there's been a lot of collaboration between uh, myself and the people in this group, um, a, a lot of witticisms exchanged, a lot of jabs, a lot of jokes, a lot of love. Uh, and I'm fortunate to uh, say there, there hasn't been a mean-spirited gesture that's that's come my way in the past year and i can attribute that to the the bulk of my time being spent in this space and, and centered around the the individuals that are up here so to that to a, a year of little accomplishment but absolutely no setback uh, i thank you all it's it's been a pleasure I feel like we need an ah sound. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Jason up. All right. Oh, just, oh, George did it for us. Thanks, George. <laughs> thanks, George. But yeah, thanks, Stephen. And um, you're absolutely right. It's it's for me when I was coming into Twitter Spaces, my journey. Um, when I logged into Twitter, I still remember the first day I came in and I saw the Spaces. And I didn't know how to, who to talk to or where to go. So I just started joining random spaces. And um, slowly then I think we met on one of Keith Keller's um, spaces and we started talking and we started getting to know each other. And then it, it, we kept saying the same thing is that we've been on Twitter for years, for so, for so many years we've been on Twitter and some of us followed each other and some of us didn't, but just hearing our voices, um, the ideas that we shared, the brainstorming sessions that we had and back in the chat, like we share about our families, our kids, what we had for breakfast, our, our traveling. And it's such an amazing dynamic that I don't think this would have happened if it wasn't for Twitter spaces because we see each other tweet, but you don't hear the person. You don't feel them. You don't understand um, their background because it's just Twitter. Like I could just be using, again, I could I could have been using an AI, but connecting with real people, that's the true treasure of Twitter spaces for me. This is, this is what I came out with this entire two years as connecting with those people. And um, you are who you surround yourself with. They... We up leveled each other. We had our downs and we had our lows and we had our highs. And it's just amazing to grow with people around you to help you up level to the next level. And um, here we are today. I was going to add, Gia, uh, when you said Keith, that kind of invoked a memory of uh, hearing Kiki's voice on having a role as the waterfall person and then it kind of evolved from there of learning more about her and finding out she's from New York. And, but it was, it was interesting that it started at as now Kiki, can you do the waterfall with everyone? Oh yeah. Kiki do the waterfall. <laughs> oh, that would be uh, fun. So, yeah. Um, oh my God. This brings back so many memories and um, yeah, that, um, yeah, sure. We can do the waterfall. So, um, everyone uh you can just uh go through the space and see who is uh here with us uh you can just uh, uh honor the host the co-hosts uh the speakers and whoever else you want to um uh to add and then uh you can um go to the top um it used to be at the bottom actually <laughs> so that, that's how much twitter has changed at least in ios and uh, 
you can uh, share uh, you can all share it the same way. We used to share it within Twitter. Uh, and now you can invite you uh, through a DM. Uh, you can copy the link. Uh, we used to actually, um, when we when I started the waterfall, um, I broke Twitter. Um, I don't know who knows this, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> Andrew came. <laughs> Uh, Andrew came that has created <laughs> Twitter, Twitter space. Oh, that was before the dashboard, the Twitter spaces dashboard, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we the, there there were some algorithms that used to actually uh, blink the lights on Twitter. It was um, open mics. That was uh, George Silverman. Uh, it was the hundreds. That was Rachel. Uh, it was, um, uh, and then uh, it was the waterfall that actually brought, uh, I think when we first did the waterfall, 200 people came into that space. Wow. So, yes, uh, we cannot do the waterfall the way we used to because it used to just uh, bring us to Twitter. Uh, but you can actually sh share the space back on Twitter or you can DM people to just, uh, have them join us and we can do that on the count of three whichever one you want to okay. do all right let's That's do it <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you can have as many people as you want in here and um, on the count of uh, three we used to count to three right oh yeah so, we used to count yes yes yeah so um, we are just going to count together one, two, three, and then press send. And uh, you're going to send that into the Twitterverse, as I used to say. And uh, we're just going to get some more people into the space uh, through DMs or through Twitter. So that's uh, the waterfall that we haven't, uh, we haven't done for a very, very long time. But thank you, Brian, uh, for bringing back that memory. And uh, thank you for the kudos. That was really, really wonderful of you thank you absolutely and then uh kind of cool of how some of us have met in real life or irl so i had the chance to meet rose um this year as well so uh the, even though they might seem like far away that they're pretty close uh if you think of it depending on where you're located Yeah. Yep, we are. We really are. Brian, what were your favorite moments for uh, Twitter Spaces this entire year? Like, where were you and where you are now? And how do you feel about Twitter Spaces? How did it impact your life? I think it started to invoke kind of, not to bring up the Elon tangent, but that town hall mentality of, like, everyone is represented in some way. Uh it's like uh, the example that I used a lot is moving to a new city. Who do I go for this? Where do I go to eat breakfast? So that, that town hall mentality is, is I think alive and well in that sense. And uh, recently did have a, a music artist through my nonprofit speak on a space. So it kind of had an evolution of like uh, not just, random folks all the time but uh folks who are in certain uh sectors that can um uh, that can uh kind of demonstrate their reach as well Oh, sorry, I disconnected for a second. Um, can anyone hear me? Yes. <laughs> yes I, wonder, hear you. Oh, okay. I wonder what had happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my heart dropped. Oh, my God. Remember the days when we used to just get rugged? And that was a term. Oh, yeah. yeah, we used to get rugged so many times. And George, what about you? Tell us your journey. 
Um, how did you feel about social audio, Twitter spaces, and you met us and where you are now? Oh. Wow. It's hard to keep it short. Uh, <clears throat> it, As most of you know and don't want to hear again, <laughs> I've been doing this for social, what's now called social audio for 53 years. So it was really wild to see this get revived. Um, for me, it was a revival. For a lot of other people, Clubhouse was new. Um, but I made my career doing telephone focus groups. Telephone, audio only. Um, so it was wild to see this thing start two or three years ago, and, you know, and then start on, on Twitter and Spaces. And um, I thought I had a lot to contribute in terms of the interactive mode, which a bunch of us in New York or in the, the New York focus group moderators invented that in the early 70s, 71, 2, 3. Um, and when I brought it on Clubhouse, it was utterly rejected and ridiculed. Um, when I tried to get people to do it here, um, it was less so, but still rather shocking that you would actually have a discussion without people raising their hands and just jumping in, as we've been mostly doing right now, this last two hours. Um, it was greeted with a great deal of open ridicule. People like Keith Keller and Kevin Healy openly ridiculed it and made fun of it um, rather hostily. And I, I decided to say, to pull a classic marketing thing. I don't know if people noticed what I did, but I named the raising the hand mode the cop mode, C-O-P, the calling on people mode. And that kind of pulled, pulled out the rug from under them. And a uh, number of people like Gia and like Jason and Samantha uh, kind of embraced it or wanted to try, at least wanted to try it. You know, you were at least game, which is all I was asking because it, it's not for everybody. It's not for all the time. Uh, and it requires a little more skill. So I didn't expect everybody to do it, but a lot of people were very game about it. And, and, uh, it's now become a kind of standard for a lot of spaces. And, uh, I think independently, the, the NFT people, all the NFT people, uh, run their spaces exactly that way. I don't think they got it from me. I think that just spontaneously happened. Uh, but it was, it was really very gratifying over the year to see how many people, a lot of people are erroneously calling it open mic mode. And I, while I personally like open mics because I like to hear the ambient noise, I like to hear dogs barking. I know it throws a lot of other people off and they don't like it. So they, they mute themselves. But I love to see, the, it, I like to hear grunts and groans and, and yup and aha uh -huh and laughter, stuff like that. And it really adds a lot to it. And a lot of you are embracing that now. And I'm very grateful to you to doing that. And I hope that I get, made a contribution to the, the the way spaces are run now. And again, it's not always, and I even do it. I mean, you come to my spaces, I do a hybrid mode. I mean, I, I ask for people to jump in when they like, because I don't know when they have something to say and when it's most relevant, when they want to jump on, piggyback on what somebody else said. Um, I can't tell that as the facilitator. So I ask them to do that, and some people prefer to raise their hand. Fine, they raise their hand, and they, I call them, uh, and it works. It works just fine. Um, so that was the uh, and the other high point of the year was I sent out on August 11th. I sent out the following tweet that went viral. Uh, Today I am 80 years old. So far, so good. And that was my coming out that I was 80 years old. I, I hid that fact from people because I thought my ideas would be rejected as being from some old guy who they didn't have anything to learn from. And all I want to do is come here and 
uh, share the wisdom that I've been given. I mean, I've discovered a few things. Some of it's my wisdom, but most of it I got from other people in a very long, very successful and happy life. And I, I really want to pass that along before I leave the planet. That's my sole motivation. I'm not. Well, thank you. George, I think <laughs> Thank that's you. such a great way for us to kind of um, continue yep. the conversation because I will say for me, I look at this group of folks here that are now very good friends, dear friends that we've shared mm -hmm. so much time together that I didn't know you guys before Twitter spaces. And as Gia mentioned, we were all on Twitter. Isn't that amazing? But for whatever yep. reason, it never put us together. And now we are together and we've really cemented very strong bonds with one another in a really beautiful mm. way. And as Gia mentioned before, we've done a lot of things together beyond this, but beyond those initial fumblings, we were all trying to poke around and figure it out. We're not doing fun things, exciting things, funny things. And where will this go? I don't know, but I'm excited to have these ride or die folks with me to do those kinds of things. And I, I'm excited to hear what others have to add to yeah. that. Rose, Indra, Haytham, jump in. Right. You got me, Jennifer. I'll jump in. Uh, can you hear me now? Is this any better? Yes, I am. Okay. I put on earbuds. I've been quarantined to my room because I've had COVID for the first time. So there you go. Um, so my son is on the way home, but I'm in here. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, flying home is what I mean. Uh, so just looking back on where we were a year ago, I think a year ago, I was just getting to know all of you. And uh, but over the year and being in so many spaces with you and, and seeing your tweets, you know, everybody um, in this group and, and beyond who's not on stage uh, and, and many of those I see and uh, we're listening, I've really come to know. And so if I want to turn to somebody who, uh, you know, might know about education, there, there's Kiki, you know, who's just a doll and, and so, so treasure. And, uh, and now I know Dr. Jasmine Berry when I have a question about AI. So, I mean, it's really just been a, a fantastic resource, both uh, professionally and per personally, to get to know all of you. And, uh, you know, really had a lot of joy in being in so many uh, great spaces and, and really, um, I guess when you're curious, whatever age you are, you know, Twitter is, is always uh, a great place. But I, I would say that of all the people that I knew on Twitter, I didn't know any of you. Uh, I did have the pleasure of meeting Brian uh, in Central Park. And when my kids, my kids were with me, I think it was around the holidays. And I said, well, I'm going to be, meet someone in, from Twitter. And they looked at me like I, I had to be crazy. And they still kid me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, I, you know, and in a way, a lot of the conversations we have here are conversations I can't necessarily have with my family because they, they, they don't get it. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're finding each other in an intellectual way and sharing conversations that are, are very hard to have. And even with my closest friends, I don't have these conversations with like, I, I don't know who I can call up and say, hey, let's talk about chat GPT. Like, What? So, so anyway, so right. I just want to express my appreciation for everybody here. George, we always uh, can sometimes butt hands on approach. I think we've learned to uh, respect each other, which is the mm -hmm. idea of, of, of what we're, you know, what we're about when we do come to things uh, from a different perspective. So, yes. uh, and, uh, you know, I've held Twitter spaces here. I, I've held a lot of um, my, uh, live stream shows and I've been fortunate and lucky to have uh, Gia and Jennifer and uh, and Indra on my show. So Rose, you know, are you, uh, Rose, are you finding your friends a little more boring? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, finding, because I'm finding that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I guess you could say that. Uh, you know, <laughs> the topics are not as, as, as world yeah, you know, encompassing right. with friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so uh, like... I really, you know, it's, it's, you know, who, who can we talk about uh, generating poetry on GP, you know, even with poets, I think I couldn't say, mm -hmm. hey, have you tried chat GPT for haiku? Or, you know, I also tried it for just so everybody knows, for Milton, you know, I tried like, trying to get specific and see if it could mm -hmm. generate Paradise Lost. <laughs> it couldn't. <laughs> so, you know, 
But anyway, so thank you, Gia, for, for coming up with this idea for the space and everybody who who has joined tonight. And it's amazing that we got so many of us uh, together for, for one night. So let's keep going. And I can't wait to hear where we are next year at this time. Well said. We love you, Rose. You're a national treasure too, baby. Thanks so much, Gia. I'm turning off my yeah, I'm, uh, uh, yeah. feedback. I know, I, I just wanted to jump in and say, like, uh, uh, first I want to thank Kia, but she's the one who actually got me into, like, Twitter spaces. It all started with a tweet that I saw. She was talking about Twitter spaces. Then I kind of, like, uh, I didn't know Kia back then. Then I just, like, replied to her, like, what is Twitter spaces? Oh, it's just like, uh, uh, it's just like, what is the other one called? Uh, Clubhouse. I was like, what is Clubhouse. I never used Clubhouse in my life. I never used any kind of like social audio before. <laughs> and she literally, that's exactly her expression. Then she told me like, hey, uh, join this space, which was a space that has had Keith in it. Mm. Oh, I, I remember like, that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, this is quite interesting. Like finally Twitter has something else than people just like uh, uh, kind of like attacking each other and, uh, and like trying to find dig some news or uh, people trying to be famous and uh, for me it was like uh, Twitter was just like a place where I can like uh, just go on talk about politics uh, like get rid of like my anger there and just leave that's what I used to do with Twitter <laughs> it wasn't like a big thing for me and uh, and as soon as I started like joining those spaces I was like wow I'm talking to humans these are amazing people and then kind of like became friends with Gia then Samantha, George, uh, Chris, uh, all of you guys. And it was, for me, it was just the beginning. And then I started, like, you know what? I need to explore more. And to be honest, like, uh, I have really amazing friends that are in this room that are not speakers. Like, there is Jamila down there. Uh, there is uh, Mohammed Asue from Saudi Arabia. There is, uh, there is Dr. Ayman. He's from Japan. He's a robotics uh, uh, engineer. I knew all those people just through Twitter spaces, and we became like really close friends. There's uh, there's Talal. He was here earlier and he left, but this is the only person. He's from uh, he's from UAE, and this is the only person that I actually met in real life. I literally like flew to Florida just to meet him like a few days ago, and man, when I met him, I didn't feel like it's someone that I kind of like just knew. It's like the first time we meet. It's like this is a friend that I've known like for years. So honestly, like uh, for me, Spaces kind of like connected me with people who, who, who are like different, but like me. If, if, if you guys can understand that in a way, like uh, I've always like been like even with, like uh, in my family, it was for me it was really hard like kind of like to have the same way of like doing things, thinking or kind of like I wouldn't ask my like my family like, hey, let's hop on a group call and discuss this. But here, kind of like, hey, I would call you, hey, how, what about this? What about that? Let's do this. Or let's do Same thing with Samantha. I really, really feel like I've won not just friends, people that I really love and care about. And thank you all, really. Wow. Thank you, Haytham. Um, I've known yeah. you. Yeah, I just met you on Spaces, and I think I heard you once. And uh, we just connected, and that was it. Now we talk often. We know about our families. And, yeah, I feel like I've, I've known everyone here for years, and it's amazing. Uh, I love what you said. Absolutely. I love everything you said. Absolutely. Hello, yeah, everyone. Thank you all. Indra. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Indra. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is wonderful to be part of this. Thank you, Gia, for this idea of putting this together. Uh, I can't believe how time has flown. And my earliest memories of everybody in the spaces is, is there was some sort of synchronicity where we, many of us in in this group, we would just all seem to be 
um, supporting each other's spaces and we would just all hop around to all the spaces. And that was one thing that I really loved was the supportive environment. It was as if we had our own little community that was thriving and growing. And I think it's really important. To me, I thought, well, you know, I, I know about production in, in other areas, but uh, this Twitter spaces thing, I just kind of fell into it very early in the piece. And I was lucky enough to just start engaging in the spaces. And with all of you, I think I've probably been in everybody's space here. <laughs> I'm, I can't really think of anybody that I hadn't been in their own space um, in, in this group. And that's how it all began for me is uh, I was getting pretty adventurous. And the fun thing about Uh, all of you is that you all have different specialty areas uh, that you have and so I guess variety is the spice of life because I was trekking around to all the different spaces and I still do as much as I can nowadays Um, and I think you know that is that was the secret source of the early humble beginnings of you know for me the Twitter spaces Um, it certainly encourage me very quickly because once you have that kind of cohesiveness with a network you know then oh I started doing my own spaces pretty quickly and of course you know really appreciate that early support which is always needed particularly when you first start doing something new is to have those familiar faces that support you and encourage you and you know I mean I have been non-stop um I was trying to think like actually at the three spaces it will be um it's over a year I haven't stopped and and actually this Monday I'm going to stop I'm going to have give myself a break um the three spaces I had two before that earlier days when I met all you guys (laughs) but um it so it is still it's for some people outside of um the Twitterverse uh when I talk about Twitter audio spaces there's always that kind of deer with headlights kind of look (laughs) that I get from a lot of people and then I I think it's like it's also part I feel for us is that we're really uh, great examples of using Twitter spaces and we really understand um, you know all the advantages and all the fun bits as well that we can have with it the capabilities by us all being here today, I think this is this is a testament in itself that uh, there's a cohesiveness, there's a relationship building, there's a support, and and the idea that we can all have our own individual fields of expertise and and all thrive. So I, I really feel like it's a blessing that uh, I did meet everybody um, back in the early days of Twitter Spaces, and um, here we are continuing on the journey. So um, it's truly a blessing. Thank you. I thought I got rugged again. Uh, but thank you so much, Indra. And uh, I love I love your spaces, how you always introduce positivity and how you're always encouraging a healthier mindset. And uh, it's good to hear that you're taking a break too. You've been running the whole year. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for being here and being part of this amazing group uh, with us. We appreciate you, appreciate everyone here. And you mentioned something really, really important. uh, And I want to add to that is trust. Like we are at a level, everyone you see here on stage, we know each other's style. We know what we speak about. We know we we can bring into the table that literally if I decided to start a space like after this one, let's say like immediately, I'll just call them up like, hey guys, I'm starting this space. And we almost don't have to plan for it. Because we know each other's styles and we know how to make it go around. And this is the level of trust that you want to build in with people that you connect with. That if something happened, you know they have your back. Uh, That if something needed to be done, you know they will be there. So this is one of the things that I truly appreciate. And I cannot do the same with everyone else. Uh, If I have guests coming on or if if I met new people, I know that 
I still have to do my, my full preparation, my tech on the uh, back end and everything. But with these people here, it's the trust that we built together over the years. So I appreciate you all for that. All right. Who's next? Who would like to share their journey and what do you guys have? And what would you like? What would you guys like? Uh, what would you guys like to leave with uh, our audience here today when it comes to Twitter spaces and uh, coming into the new year? Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, man, don't raise your hand. Go ahead. Jump in. Uh, you know, I'm used to that old raising hand <laughs> function. So, <laughs> yeah. So, old you habits. know, I, I can't claim that uh, I've been around uh, at least in the past few months, but you know, and I want to apologize for that personally for those who have been good friends to me here. But, um, you know, we, we initially started out in a celebration of the 22 experts in social audio, which was really, honestly, a bit tongue in cheek. It was just a bunch of friends who absolutely loved social audio. You know, but I think true to that is that you could have asked any of us a question about social audio and we would give you you know our best advice and i think that's what really is the necessity of a group of experts isn't just people who are there for the acknowledgement of someone saying to them that you're you know you have done really well in this it's the fact that you know we actually meant uh meant well to social audio and we spend our time working towards um, helping Twitter spaces to become something special, you know, and if I had to give, a, you know, a, I guess some advice to anyone out there who wants to be the expert, because I, I think, you know, we need a changing of the guard. We need new people to become experts in social audio. And I think to do that just requires practice, you know, get out there, run some spaces. Don't be afraid to try something new, you know, stay up to date on obviously the latest technology the landscape of social audio is extremely different than it was a year ago. Um, and, and, and really most importantly is to specialize in something, maybe something that you work within, you know, focusing on a specific niche or a topic within social audio. Uh, it can help you to build your expertise and become known as, you know, authority in that area. And the most biggest thing that we've probably learned with Twitter spaces is just to basically engage with others. You know, we've seen, people grow exponentially four times, 10 times, even 20 times in the course of over the last couple of years with social audio. And, you know, the most important thing is just help people and just be there. And like I said, you know, I've taken pretty much a mental break from social audio, mental break from social audio um, over the past few months. But anyone who knows me knows I've got six kids and we've got, a ton of things going on in our personal lives. So, you know, the, the least I could do was, was, was focus on family first and, you know, and, and that became a major component to me. You know, I really do absolutely love social audio. I literally changed my name to that social audio guy. So I really do feel like it's something that can be a big game changer. Um, but, you know, looking at the conversation from tonight, chat GPT, um, you know, I think we don't know what the future holds, but what we do know is relationships are super important. And I can't think of a better group of 22 people, those here and those not, that can represent uh, friendship on this app. And, you know, I can really say I'm grateful. They literally changed my life um, for the better. You know, I was looking for something to change in a positive way. And this was not something i expected but at the end of the day you know social audio did that for me so thank you guys mm. wow i love you so much chris and i feel the same uh we feel the same about you too um you're one of my very close friends and I, I can trust you with everything. I mean, I know I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record now, but it's, I feel the same way about each and every one of you here. But it's true. It's true. Social audio changed my life, too, in so many ways and just getting to know these people. So this is something that I wouldn't. You can't put a value like you can't put a number on it. You can't say it's like, oh, can I? 
pay this subscription to join these people. You, there isn't. There isn't such thing because it's so much valuable. It's so much more than that. Thank you, Chris. And again, I wanted to scream when I saw you. I was hoping and praying like, oh, God, please let Chris come today. And you did. So I'm glad you did. So, Gia, I think it's a good time just to kind of read some people in, we call it, read you in. So uh, Social Audio was started, I think, in November, December of 2020. And then in mm -hmm. the beginning of 2021 was when it started to get opened up to uh, people who had a certain amount of followers. And so a lot of us started during that period, starting in March, April-ish and on, and starting out with just being like many of you, a listener in the space mm -hmm. and you know, getting brave enough to go up and, and be a speaker and then hosting spaces. And by the time December of 2021 came along, a group of us started really cross-supporting, really getting to know each other. We created a group chat. Um, we are sharing all the new, the new innovations, how to run spaces, how to mediate, how to overcome problems, how to run great spaces. It was really all about learning digital, digital literacy in spaces. And at the end of December, we kind of came up with the top 22 contributors. And this is where that, you know, top 22 experts to follow for 2022 is. So a year ago, literally on Christmas, on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, Chris and Kiki and I are on Canva creating these graphics of all of these, these amazing people that we've met and created the, like basically a, a yearbook picture of all of us. And so here we are, fast forward 12 months later, and we're asking each other, where are we at? What did we learn in, in this year since we celebrated, you know, being becoming top to, top world experts with Twitter spaces? Um, and so that's just we're reading all of you up in the room about what we're celebrating here. And so mm -hmm. many of you are just starting your journey on Twitter spaces and we're telling you what you have to look forward to, you know, community, international community, international innovative ideas and questions. We can message anyone in the room and get a better than Google answer that's very specific to us in a kind and compassionate way. And often, let's start a space on it and let's find out more kind mm -hmm. of reply. And that's the kind of camaraderie that we have all created. Many of us have gone on and co collaborated. Um, um, I met a, I met someone who I did spaces with and we ended up running uh, a whole masterclass uh, boot camp for how to how to uh, become a TED speaker and a public speaker. And a lot of that was curated and learned and the relationship fostered through Twitter spaces and people we met on there. And so it's been phenomenal for for me and I know for many others. Every single person that you see on the speaker page has been a mentor to each other in different capacities in different ways. Um, it used to be funny because these teenage, you know, teenagers would say, oh, I have my gaming friends or my online friends. And I remember always thinking, <laughs> oh, man, like you need to get a life out there because you really don't know what friendship and relationships mean. But now I'm eating crow because I actually prefer many of my online <laughs> friends and relationships than I do. <laughs> <laughs> In the real world, in, in the physical world, um, because the diversity that can come in a room, you can have someone from at, from a small village in Africa creating some, you know, uh, psychology or emotional and emotional regulation tips that he's learned in his village or even innovative ideas for farming that he's trying out or asking questions. I've run spaces on like business AMA, uh, oh, startup business and side hustle startup AMA with my business background and literally people from all over the world in a living room, basically not caring about gender or political status or how you're dressed or economic status and literally exchanging amazing top level ideas and questions real time. Where else can you do that? So I'm celebrating with becoming on the, you know, we're all on the, frontier pioneer edge of social audio and we welcome all of you here today who get to celebrate with us as on this journey this amazing journey to the top of the mountain so thank you everyone <laughs> well said thank you mm. yes i love what you said oh. I could relate so much to the part where you said um, the gaming friends and, you know, it's like we always looked at them. And then here we are geeking out on Twitter space. We used to spend five hours in a space every week. Every week. That's crazy. I don't even 
talked to my mom that much in a month, I don't think, on the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. These were amazing. All right. Go ahead, Jennifer. Well, I was going to uh, encourage you, Gia, to give us your final words of wisdom as we close out this space and, and to thank everyone for joining us. And if you're looking at us up here and thinking, wow, that's amazing. I could never do that. The reality is, yes, you can. You can do amazing things because you have your own spice, your own flavor, your own connections, and you can make amazing things happen. There is no secret formula per se. It's something that can be replicated now. Everybody's got their own spice and flavor, so the personalities are going to jive how they jive. But we encourage you to do it. Do the thing. Create something amazing. Start now. And where will you be a year from now? What will you be celebrating? Uh, thanks, Jennifer. And that's perfect. that's a really good question. That's a that's exactly. Thanks, George. That's the perfect question for this space today to end the space with is where are you going to be five years from now? Where are you going to be next year? Um, everywhere I go, everyone I talked to recently have been saying that 2022 has been a really, really crappy year. And it has. OK, I'm not going to sit here and deny that it hasn't. It has. It has been for has been difficult three years for all of us here uh, in, a, in any shape or form. And it kind of gets discouraging that um, I'm going to start a new year again and, I'm, I, and I, I don't want to start and fail again. I'm afraid it's it is it can get discouraging. It can get difficult. But one of the things that you can grow is by growing through the challenges is going through it you just ha this is one of the things that you have to go through this is one of the things that you have to be resilient in your mindset i understand that being positive is a thing but it's the core your resilience within your mindset that's something that you have to you just have to go through it and just like jennifer said we did not just start with these professional experts and we had our own shows and radio shows no a lot of us, we just came as normal people, just like you are here today. We didn't understand what the heck was going on, purple circles everywhere. So we just kept an open mind and we started experimenting. We had a lot of failures. I still remember my first couple of spaces were garbage. <laughs> like I, I have them recorded and I, I, I still, I cringe every time I listen to them. But the only way I learned how to do a space or how to do a professional show is just by going, doing a hundred shows that failed. And then finally the hundred and one, that's the one I was successful at. It's just, I just learned, we go back and forth, back, back and forth and just listen, take feedback, keep an open mind to feedback, listen to what others are doing, listen from them, connect with people who are not in your circle, be uncomfortable. Just go ahead and just be uncomfortable. If you are in your comfort zone, you're not going to move forward. You're not going to up level to the next level. And just keep an open mind. It's a new year. It's going to be an amazing year for everyone here. I know it. Despite what you're going through, it's still going to be an amazing year because you're still growing. You're still thriving. You're not surviving anymore. You're moving into thriving mode and i hope today's space uh was good i hope you learned a lot i hope you were inspired uh from the space today that I, I found out that we definitely need to do more and more topics on uh chat gpt so this is my promise to you next year we're gonna have more topics on chat chat gpt3 why is this word so hard to say together chat gbt so uh we're going to do a lot and if you <laughs> And if you have any suggestions, any comments, anything that you have learned from us today as a group, as experts, as uh, as just individuals, something, someone that inspired you today, please, please, please tag them, send them a DM, thank them for their effort, because it takes a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of mental stamina to be able to um, host spaces and make sure that they are good for the speakers, that they are good for the listeners, that they're enriching for the listeners, then it's also also a safe space so uh, reach out to us all of our dms are open we're here for anyone who would like to learn about spaces how to start a group or community or anything really just reach out stay connected and stay safe and remember you are who you surround yourself with with that i leave you love peace and prosperity for the new year bye-bye bye everyone bye everyone, bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. have a great bye, day
holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, yep. everyone. Happy New Year. Yep. Yes. You happy holidays. Love, yes. light, and blessings, Go everyone. <laughs> Much help. All right. Co hosts, uh, stay until we close the space, please. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Closing in three, two.